Do you like basketball? Basketball, no. Mm -hmm. I like, but I'm not good at. Yes, I'm not. Me too. Sorry. Oh my God! In his internet, his bandwidth is being abused. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the State of the League podcast. I'm your host, Jack, aka Jokic Joe Star. With me, as always, is the world-famous Pablo Escobar. You're tuned in to the only NBA podcast that talks about every NBA team every week. If you are subscribed to the Patreon, this is this week's free episode, patreon.com slash state of the league. If you want uh, the Western Conference, this is breaking down the East. And I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably like, whoa, we just talked to you guys like four days ago. What the hell? What the hell is this episode doing on my feed right now? And uh, we're, we had to bump it up. I have some shit going on this weekend. It's my fault. So I know we brand ourselves as the only NBA podcast that comes out on the weekend. Sorry, Bill Simmons. Sorry, everyone else. We're going to be bumping you out of the limelight a little bit this week. Uh, Pablo, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Yes, everybody. Jokic Joestar is not locked. He is he's putting his podcast duties aside for something else. So Kobe would never. Yeah, exactly. Um, fuck. What was I gonna say? Um, I don't know. Uh, right off the bat, we got a couple lobbyist requests. I suppose I, I lost my train of thought there. Um, if you wanna if you if you wanna be a lobbyist again, go to patreon.com slash state of the league and maybe your lobbyist request could hop on to the top of this fucking episode. The first one is not basketball related. Could you shout out the Erie Canal? Fantastic bit of historical infrastructure. I meant to do Erie huh. Canal research here. I have <laughs> Wikipedia open, so I, I could do this. Where is the Erie Canal? Is it in Ohio? It's in New York. See, in my mind, it, oh. it, it it goes with like the Great Lakes, kind of like that's where I had assumed the Erie Canal was around. It's in upstate yeah, New there York. Lake Erie? Is it not? Yeah, related okay. To Lake Erie, or is no, Lake no, Erie it goes, over there? It goes from the Hudson River to Lake Erie, so I assume it's a way for like shit to get further inland from like New York ports and stuff like that, uh, and then you can go. To Lake Erie and get it get it closer to the Midwest portion of the United States. It has been called, according to Wikipedia, the nation's first super highway. So that's pretty cool. Uh, shout, out to, shout out to the Erie Canal. I wonder why they named it Lake Erie. Was it like a spooky lake, or was there a famous guy named Erie? Uh, I, I don't have the Pull answer up the to that. Lake but it's Erie good... Wiki. We need it. Well, I have it right here, but it just says. I mean, first of all, I'm really bad. At, oh. Perfect. Right at the top. <laughs> <laughs> the first portion is ambiguity in name. The waterway oh, today referred to as the Erie Canal is quite different from the 19th century Erie Canal. Oh, okay. So we got two canals going on here. More than half of the original Erie Canal was destroyed or abandoned during construction of the New York State Barge Canal in the early oh. 20th century. The sections of the original route remaining in use were widened significantly, uh, mostly west of Syracuse, with bridges rebuilt and locks replaced. It was called the Barge Canal at the time, but that name fell into disuse with the disappearance of commercial traffic and the increase of recreational travel in the 20th century. Uh, that didn't that didn't help me out at all. Who they they was? went from business to pleasure. Yeah, okay. I mean, kind of kind of symbolic of the entirety of America. You know, we used to be a nation of industry and now we are um gluttonous I don't know. We fall we, we rest on our laurels too much. We got to get into more wars, more colonialism, more conquest. We got to figure some shit out on that front. The name of Lake Erie was taken from the Native Americans that lived along the South Shore when Europeans oh. arrived in the 1600s. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Then we did all that conquest. We had this sick, we had this sick canal with this sick name. Now we don't have any of that shit. So, Joe Biden, I know you listen. Maybe get on that a little bit. Shout out to the Hudson River. I was watching National Treasure last night, and they went oh. into it was and Damn. It's, it's pretty dirty in there. Remember when there were dolphins in there? Yeah, during uh, during COVID. Yeah, man, we should Bro, go those back dolphins to... probably got fucked up. Oh my god! Like I get that there was no boat traffic dissuading them from going in there. That was probably like us walking into a room filled with cigarette smoke and being like, 
for like 10 minutes. You think they were the equivalent of the kids who are like exploring Chernobyl, uh, <laughs> a, a YouTube compilation, whatever. Yeah, I could. Did either one of them have a GoPro taped to their head? That could be a that could be a fun. Yeah, I, I think they were probably like that. They got home and they told all of their friends. They were like, oh, we went up and all their friends were like, that's fucking weird. Why did you do that? Um, did you find anything cool? No. What a shocker. Oh, my God. <laughs> they, one of them smokes a cigarette. That'd be, that'd be cool. I, I, man, I wish I spoke dolphin and I wish I spoke all the other animal languages. Just, just, I would love a documentary from the animal's point of view on what was going on in covid they're like where did all the freaks go where did all the bipedal disgusting animals go well i mean i'm sure there'd be a bunch of like if you asked pigeons they'd be like where'd my fucking food go guys uh, we are mm-hmm. there's a famine hitting the pigeon community right now probably not. well there's you know we of... abandoned the pigeons right i do know that i don't like thinking about that that's fucked up man <laughs> what we did to the pigeons um all right next the next lobbyist request. There's two. There's one that says what NBA players would A be the best. <laughs> oh fuck that. <laughs> we're still on the we're still on the intro. It's fine. <laughs> what, what NBA players would be the best at April Fool's pranks? And then there was another one that said, would love to hear you guys cook up some nicknames for players based purely on a sample size of this week's games. I have some nicknames cooked up. I don't have any pranks cooked up. So which one of those sounds more fun to talk about? I mean, well, we could talk about both. I don't have any nicknames cooked up, but I'll hear yours. Um, As for who would be the best at April Fool's, probably Jimmy Butler, because he's he's a pranking guy. And he, you know what? He's Mm -hmm. kind of doing pranks lately. He's like, Ah, I'm not at the NBA game tonight. I'm at the tennis game. Ah, I'm not trying when I'm playing. (laughs) (laughs) I just saw a a picture that said Jimmy Butler today from all the aggregate accounts of him riding his horse around downtown Miami. Ah. So, I mean, yeah, that's super, that's super whimsical and prankful. (laughs) I think, I think Boban would probably want to, but, uh. It's impossible for him to move without being noticed. That would be like mm. like your bookcase in the corner, standing up and like walking through the room. Just being like, Holy shit, what the hell's going on over there? He could um, go to like a children's literary museum and he could pretend to be a statue of the BFG and then he moves. Its oh, that would be good. I would like that a lot. Um, yeah, so that'd be good. But I said Boban. Um, I don't know. Kyrie feels maybe not like a prankster. Like if Kyrie had to be a ninja, all of like the <laughs> dexterity and balance and like his swiftness he moves with feels like it, it would lend itself good to that kind of thing, which could be useful in pranks. But his demeanor as he's put on to the public is fairly serious. I don't know how silly he really gets behind closed doors. Yeah, he might think like he might have some he might tell us the origin story of uh april fool's day and how it comes from the devil and and negative karma or something okay yeah they're trying to sap your positive chakras with Mm -hmm. pranks when they laugh at your expense they gain your energy and so no pranks in the Mavs locker room right now that's probably one of the chakra types Kyrie would have and naruto you're you're more uh you're more prone to being able to use like certain natures. So like, hmm, there's wind. You know all of them fire, off the top of your head. There's uh, is crap. there earth? Is there water? There's, earth. Just, there's who's water. This, who's this Avatar: The Last Airbender? <laughs> Come on! Oh my God! Naruto there's, ripped it is off. Is the chakra nature? I don't even know. But yeah, yeah. Kyrie's probably a lightning guy. Yeah, that sounds about right. He seems very lightning pilled. All right, my my. My nicknames, I have four of them here. Um, right off the bat, so Giannis, he's the Greek freak normally. Bucks went one and three this week. They lost to the Wizards. Greek people, they don't call themselves Greek. They call themselves Helens, Hellenistic. And so I called him the hopeless Hellenistic. That was my nickname for him this week. Uh, then DeJounte Murray, I said he's the Protestant occupation. The way he's uh, <laughs> oppressing oppressing all of these Celtics. Uh, I liked that one a lot. And then, oh, I said Jalen Brown. This is a bit of a stretch. JTL Lynn Brown. 
because they lost to Atlanta twice. So it's like J, A T L, and oh my Brown. God. And so he's yeah, because the, the it's like the reverse Lebronto. They own his name. He doesn't own the city. Um, and then Jalen Brunson, the Knicks. The Knicks went one and three this week. So I said he's Jalen dunn son but it could oh. also be uh also be preserved as dunson so like d-u-n-c-e and he has like a big mm-hmm. cone paper hat and tibbs is calling him stupid and make him sit down in the corner that's all i had but uh I, I don't know i'm not the biggest wordplay guy in the world one of my nicknames i tried to come up with nicknames for everybody in the draft uh before the season started one of them that i i keep forgetting to make public is uh cam whitmore slimy undies because uh, he <laughs> he was selling he was selling this underwear that was like branded from his hometown, and uh, but it was like there was slime all over, not literal slime, but like in the mm-hmm. design. So um, I forget what it symbolized, but I think that's a good nickname for him, Slimy Undies. Slimy Undies. He's hard to guard. Slimy Undies to the rack. Oh my god. Slimy. He's so slimy. Undies, it down. <laughs> All right. Boom. Hold on. My notes my notes app is loading. Hold on. Oh, we're filling air. We're filling air. Eleven minutes. <laughs> you know you know that's the time stamp, baby. All right. The Boston Celtics. Uh this week they went two and two. They beat the Pelicans. They beat the Hornets. They lost to the Hawks twice. I forgot to mention this at the top. We're not breaking shit down like normal this week. The team <laughs> Mo- there's a little bit of game talk, and then we're doing uh we're doing a bunch of stuff. Five things we liked about this team's season so far. So, uh, what what's Special something edition. you liked about what's something you liked about the Celtics season? Um, let's see. What did I write down? My five things for the Celtics. I like Joe Mazzula and his okay. psychotic press conference answers. Um, I like. <laughs> And actually, speaking of his psychotic press conference answers, I actually have a game for us to play. This Sweet. game is called Missoula or Bamboozla. So you're going to have to guess. Which... <laughs> I'm going to read you a quote, and you have to guess if Joe Missoula actually said this or if I'm bamboozle, bamboozle in you. Bamboozla. So, okay, I like that. There's there's ten. I wrote down ten. So how many of these do you have to get to not be a fraud? I have not listened to a Celtics press conference clip since <laughs> probably since he said he was watching the town like three yeah, times a day or, or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So let let me let me get a. I'll say six out of ten. I want to be above. I want to be above pure luck. I want to get like a little bit of skill involved. So six out of ten. Okay. Okay. All right. Question. All right. Yeah. Question one. Is this one Missoula or is it Bamboozla? Um, the quote is, "Ever seen Spider Man into the Spider Verse? There's like twenty different Spider Men. That's like our team." Missoula told reporters. I believe that. I, I think he did say that. <laughs> that one is real. He did say that. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's like our team and in like a room full of professional reporters. Like, what the hell is this guy talking about right now? <laughs> Tell me if this one is real or fake. Subway put out a foot long cookie. That should be illegal. <laughs> Um, oh, that sounds so stupid, but it sounds like something it's so it's so short, it's so succinct, it sounds like something he would say. Um, yeah, let's say it. He did say that. That one is fake. I made that one up. You're one for one, one for one. All right, good at taking on the mind of Missoula. You're getting (laughs) getting into his brain and coming up with good fake quotes. Number three. I'm always up to get knocked out, Missoula said. I think that's important too. If you can't go through the day, if you can't go through the day hoping you don't get knocked out, I don't know what. Wait a second. Hold on. I wrote this. If you can't go through the day hoping you don't get knocked out, I don't know what you do. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you probably didn't write something that confused yourself. So uh, I'll say Missoula said that one. 
Yeah, that one is real. <laughs> so what, I'm always up to get knocked out. I think that's a, if you can't go. Do through you the know day, what it was oh, about at all? Do you have like context to these quotes? No, I did not write Perfect. down the full context. <laughs> <laughs> all right, question number four: Joe Mazzula on the Celtics mindset. It's win or die. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. There's no okay. I'm going to say he said it. I'm going to say he said it. I don't think you're doing a him, you, him, you pattern right now. Did he say that? He did say it. He did say it. <laughs> Win or die. Uh, I'm at three out of four. I've only missed the first one you made up. All right. All right. Um, okay. They, <laughs> they asked him, how do you keep perspective? And he responded by reading about the Spanish flu. That, that's fake. You made that up. <laughs> that one I did make up. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love to know how he keeps perspective, though. It's probably not <laughs> super far off. Um, They asked, they were talking about how far players could run marathons. Like Al, Al Horford said he wouldn't be able to make it more than a mile. Joe Mazzula mm-hmm. said, I would just go until I die. Is that real yes. or is that fake? He did say that. He did say that. He did say that. <laughs> oh, this guy rocks. Oh, my <laughs> fucking God. All right. Um, the royal family came to a Celtics game, and uh, they asked Joe Mazzula if he got to meet the royal family. And he said, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? I'm only familiar with one royal family. I don't know too much about them, but hopefully they're Celtics fans. <laughs> you made that up because I feel like it'd be bigger news if the royal family went to a Celtics game. <laughs> that one is real. They really <laughs> went. It was Kate Middleton and and uh, Prince William. I don't know if the, oh, the, the kids Jesus, were there. Mary, and Joseph. That's so that's based. the only royal oh family he knows. <laughs> All right. Fuck. I've missed. I've missed two so far. How many two. have you read? There are three left. Okay. So, so how many do you need to win? Or can you st- still lose at this point? If I get... You it, t- so you've said seven of them. Yes. And I've missed two, and I need six. So if I get all three of these wrong, I lose. Okay, all right. So now, all right. So th- these ones are tough. All right. Question number eight. Or si- <laughs> I guess it's more like situation number eight. Joe Mazzula just walked past Marcus Smart in the locker room, did a full somersault in front of him, and turned and said, you can't do that, and then he walked out. <laughs> did that actually happen? Um, uh, no, that did not happen. That is something that was reported to have happened. <laughs> and that is real. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I need the doc. I need the uncut documentary footage from this season from the Celtics. I need to know what he's doing behind the scenes. Oh, that rocks! All right. So they they asked Joe Mazzula, "Do you like it when your guys miss out on like awards and accolades, and they have a chip on their shoulder?" Uh, he responded, "I'm a big spite guy, so yeah." As he walked off, he said, "He knows it's not healthy, but he's working through it." Um, I'm going to say he did say that. He did say that. He did say that. Oh, fuck. All right. Final, final one. Final one. Talking, speaking about Deuce Tatum. You're aware of Deuce Tatum, correct? Oh, me? Yeah, I am. Yes. I thought the reporter was asking him about Tatum's son for a second. (laughs) The, The quote is, the Spartans started training at five years old. That's what Missoula said about Deuce Tatum. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think he did say that. He didn't say that one. I no, that damn it. I made that up. So you win. You win now. Woo! You win. Woo! You can't do that. I'm gonna start busting that out to people on the street. Just a quick somersault. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh yeah. You know what? This whole time I was picturing backflip. Somersault. Oh. Most people can do a somersault, I feel like. 
Well, I think it's more ridiculous because most people can do a somersault. So to do a somersault and then go to this world class athlete and be like, "There's you can't do that. Come on, man!" Like that. That's funnier than the backflip to me. Oh, oh my god! All right, I, I love Joe Mazzula. Yeah, well, that's uh, I didn't have that on my list, but I suppose that is one of my favorite things about this season is he's just uh, he's a fun guy, and he's been he's been picking it up on the fly a little bit. Um, I suppose it's good for him that Milwaukee had like the clusterfuck coaching situation because all eyes are off him as like second year head coach now, and he's even though he's been doing like a really really good job. Mm-hmm. Um. My favorite things I like. Oh, how the- you know how we should do it? We should go back and forth. Ping, ping, ping with our with ping, our- ping, ping. All right. Well, then shut up about Joe Mazzula and his cryptic quotes. <laughs> and let me. I said I liked how uh, the media did a push on Tatum being the MVP instead of any of the other like actual real reasons as why the Celtics are super good. Uh, and so I followed that up with Jalen Brown's last 15 games. He's been 28 points, six rebounds, three assists. On 60% true shooting, and uh, he's been one of the bright spots about the Celtics this year, especially considering like he got the huge contract extension, and everyone was like rubbing their hands together, being like, this, <laughs> this guy plays bad. Oh, we're going to fucking cook him. And so like the fact, the fact that it's just been kind of radio silence on that front is about as good of a situation you could hope for. If you're a Celtic, I don't think anybody – was like lining up to give uh Jalen Brown his flowers this year. He'll probably you think he'll make an all NBA team? I don't know. I, I haven't thought it through because it's well it's now it's positionless, right? Yes. So mm, I don't know because I, I also don't know who's disqualified already. Like is Donovan mm, Mitchell yeah. disqualified? I think he is. Yeah, yeah I think so. I, so. I have no clue. I'll have to go through and look. But I, I was, I almost wrote that down as one of mine. That that uh, he got the first three hundred million. Was it the first three hundred million dollar contract? I don't even know. But they, yeah, he he, got, he was the highest paid NBA player in history when when it happened. I'm sure, like it changes every off season. But yeah, when yeah. it happened, it was a very big historic contract. Yeah, I think I think it's a good thing that we're not. That we're not like that's a disaster. That it, it's actually mm-hmm. it feels okay. I and even on the latest Bill Simmons podcast, he's like Jalen Brown's contract worth it. <laughs> and so worth I think it. uh, it's it's good. It's good because they drafted him. They drafted mm-hmm. a project player and they developed him. And they've been and he's been on the same team his whole career. And they built the chemistry and stuff. So it just feels like the right way. It feels like this is mm-hmm. what would just, happen. Just good for a day. small market, small market Boston, you know, yeah. just like real homegrown. So they're not getting a guy like that anywhere else. So they got to build it in house. Yeah, built exactly. There we, and then Reebok, because he was going to leave. So we're like, here's $300 million. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. we didn't okay. buy, uh, we retained. <laughs> okay. <laughs> retained, not bought. That rocks. <laughs> retained, um, not acquired. <laughs> low key, low key. This is something, because like, we have not talked about it as a disaster. Obviously, the postseason has not happened, and that's where a lot of people's uh, like Where's he going? Opi- <laughs> opinions got really polarizing about Jalen Brown last year. And so something to keep an eye on in the fourth quarter of the last 15 games, Jalen Brown, 53% at the free throw line. Watch out, everybody. Watch Whoa. out. He's going to choke an entire series at the free throw line. This motherfucker, no free lunches. And to win a title, you have to take the free lunches. That's what I've been saying all season. You got to take those free lunches. So, I don't know. Beyond that, uh, he's been really solid, especially defensively. He's been really cool. I also said uh, in terms of like what has helped the Celtics reach their ceiling, uh, Derek White almost hitting like the maximum a role player can be without breaking into like real all-star talks. I know there were some people that were like, he's an all-star. Um, not like not a ton of momentum behind that push as far as like the media or fans go. Even Boston fans were like, he's an all-star the way that like Golden State (laughs) fans were like, Wiggins is an all-star. The only difference is Golden State actually has the motion to make it happen a little bit. They had the K-pop guy behind them. If a K-pop guy 
got behind Derek White, maybe it could have happened. Maybe, but Derek White, hmm. do K pop would they are they like anti bald? I feel like Andrew Wiggins, he's got a great head of hair on him. Derek White, well, not so much. As far as I, I think there are like a lot of the K pop boys, I think they go mm-hmm. bald. And they're they're secretly actually bald, but they have to wear wigs to to hide it. Holy shit. It, it's a big part of their image and everything. That is a stressful life. I could not imagine that. Um, You're not yeah. allowed to date. Recently, some of the some of the female uh, K-pop stars came out and revealed that they're dating. Like this one girl, Karina from Aespa. I don't, I'm not mm-hmm. an Aespa guy, uh, but. She came who's, out. Who's your Who's your group? Uh, I'm I'm New Jeans is my old bias, and then uh, La Seraphim after. Um, but okay. I, I've been learning more about Twice. Uh, for those listening, um, I'm probably a Jiho uh, bias, and then I don't know who my bias marker is. Maybe Momo, maybe uh, Zuyu. I don't know. But uh, they came out and revealed uh, this woman named Karina came out and revealed that she's dating. A Korean actor, a famous acting guy. And so they were a celebrity power couple. And I guess everyone was like, We hate this. Kill yourself. I can't believe you would do this to me. And they, they've had to they've had to deal with like a bunch of backlash and stuff. And then another uh one of the girls in twice, Jiho, she revealed she's dating the guy who won Physical One Hundred. Do you know that show? I never watched it. It's the one no, on Netflix I've where ne- it's the Korean bodybuilders. Mm, no, I've never heard of that. It's it's like the biggest Korean people you've ever seen, like gigantic, <laughs> muscular, and they do challenges. I hear it's good, but and I think season two came out, but I didn't watch it. So, but yeah, you're not allowed to date. All right. Well, that's sad. I mean, parasocial relationships. I could see that coming. My friend in real life has a boyfriend, and, they, and I didn't get a say in this. Are you serious? They didn't have like a fan voting competition to decide who this person would date. Fuck off! I, I hate <laughs> this. I'm not listening anymore. Um, what's your next favorite Celtics thing? Yeah, that that parasocial relationships. Eh, but you know what's eh? Drew Holiday at center nice. on defense when they when they run that zone and they play Drew Holiday at center, pretty cool. Also, they just kind of stick him on centers at some points. Like when they played Embiid, they were like, "Hey, you be the on ball defender on him." Sometimes you get get in his grill, and we'll we'll try and make that happen. So I like I like taking risks like that. I love that that kind of wacky stuff. Yeah, I, I'm on board with that. Uh... And I feel like that's another, like, one of the spots you can point to and be like, Missoula's not doing nothing as a coach. It's not like the players had a meeting and they are like, Drew, run center for a little bit. Like, <laughs> Missoula, he's cooking up, he's cooking up some shit. Uh, it was modeled I, after a zone he played when he was at West Virginia and he was the center in, in the lineup. Hell yeah. This is one of the rare cases where a basketball player turned coach being like, just do what I did. It actually worked out for the for the positive most of the time. That's let's, like let's a, run a, my gimmicky defense from college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody we played, uh, they're all accountants now. They're all lawyers now. They're processing speed in terms of like breaking a zone defense. It was really bad. It just fucked everybody in the conference up. And I'm sure it'll work at the NBA level too. And it has. I mean, yeah. He played um, John Wall and Demarcus Cousins at Kentucky. I think he might have beat them. They. They were talking about it. He might have been the one who knocked them out of the tournament. I don't know for sure. Damn, they were, I saw cool. a clip of them talking about it on the podcast, on their podcast. I don't know. Who's po- is that DeMarcus Cousins' podcast? Mm, I think so. Because I saw who else, talking who to else Rondo, was on too. So, Rondo and in a separate instance. So, I've seen him talk to John Wall and I've seen him talk to Rondo. Well, so. if he was talking to both of them, then I would assume it is. I don't think it's like a transition of power where you're the guest and then you're the host the next That'd episode. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> kind of sick. A, a podcast that's never hosted by the same person twice. That's fun. It's like, it's like It Follows. Oh, okay. I've never seen that movie. I, I came it's out. really good. Uh, it came out and people were like it's so scary and then i just never got around to it and i kind of learned the bit and so i've seen the opening scene 
where the girl's like running down the street. And I like it. It's fun. I've just never sat down and watched it. Maybe I'll have to put it on my list. Yeah, it's um, it's I I don't know if I'm like watching it and I'm like, oh, but but it's a I like the concept. It's it's creative. Yeah. And all, also shout out to Ro- Rooster Teeth. I think they they came up with that idea before. <coughs> oh, I'm coughing. They came up with the idea before that movie came out, but their idea they shout out to Rooster Teeth. They invented the snail thing. Do you know about the snail thing with the million dollars? Yeah, million yeah, dollars? yeah. Where like it chases you forever, and if it touches you, you die. Yeah, that that I that became a meme on TikTok. Like people just talked about that for a little while. That was invented mm-hmm. on the Rooster Teeth podcast by Gavin Free. Shout out Gavin Free, the slow mo guy. We're chasing. We're chasing our our snail right now we got to find our snail that will permeate <laughs> through all of tiktok five years in the future maybe we've already said it maybe maybe um Missoula or bamboozla yeah maybe bamboozla will catch on once this pod blows up and people are coming through old episodes uh all right my next favorite thing for the celtics a more varied offensive approach the death of the mid-range Psych, we're Frankensteining post ups. Well, That's what I wrote down. Second in the league in post ups behind Denver. Uh, second in the league in post up field goal attempts. Second in the league in points per possession on these post ups. And second in effective field goal percentage among teams taking at least five post up field goal attempts per game. It feels every time you throw on a Celtics game, like if a team switches, there it's like they find the mismatch immediately and whoever has the mismatch Jalen Brown's a quality post up player so is Jason Tatum Tatum loves to post up and then Porzingis is one of the most effective post up guys in the league if he gets anybody like even and it's been described as like oh he's only doing it on guards I've seen in some circles online if he gets anybody smaller than like Michael Porter Jr. put on to him <laughs> he he can really abuse them there's just like the combination of physicality that he's played with this year plus the release point of his jump shot and underrated like footwork because a lot of times when uh you have that smaller guy switched on to you in the post. They're trying to overcompensate by jumping right away and trying to contest it or just like they're doing too much in terms of post defense. And so you can get like an easy layup out of it as well. Porzingis has been super effective. That's what that's what stuck out to me about Boston's offense this year. I also had something similar written down. I wrote Porzingis rebirth um, and Ooh, okay. 94th percentile post up player. Uh, I was going through the post-up stats yesterday. Uh, he is, like, by far the best of, of everyone who actually posts up. And that's, like, who has, like, over 10% of their shot mm-hmm. frequency being post-ups. He's the best one. Uh, like, he he's 94th percentile. I think everyone above him is pretty low volume. Like, Kelly Olynyk, I think, is up there and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, out of everyone who actually posts up, he has the best numbers this season. And so, it's good. Um, people, people like probably a lot of kids on TikTok, uh, who watch us, they probably don't remember Porzingis coming into the league. And there was a, like mm-hmm. at the beginning, Damn, that's it, crazy it was... to think about. Cause like Porzingis, <laughs> Porzingis to me is like one of, as I started to watch more and more basketball and pay attention to it, one of like the definitive rookie sensations in terms of like everything he was doing in the New York market. He was so fucking sick as a rookie. Yeah. He was supposed to be the savior. He was supposed to be the change. The Knicks franchise. He was supposed to be a superstar. Uh, they Kevin Durant invented the term unicorn. Cause he was talking about Porzingis. So that, that has mm-hmm. stuck ever since. So uh, I don't know if people remember how big of a deal he was and how big of a deal it was that he got traded to Dallas. Like I literally, it's like my nine 11. I remember where I was when I got the notification that he was traded to Dallas to, to play with Luca. Um, and so obviously it's gotten derailed since then. He had a bounce back year last year in Washington, but I don't know how many people saw it. I didn't really see it. Um, and I, I saw was like, a couple games of it. It was, it was, fairly impressive but the the question about him replicating it within like an offensive system that just didn't grant him a touch every time he wanted it was up in the air in the offseason for me and he's proved it wrong small smaller volume the efficiency and everything has translated perfectly up to boston yeah so i wonder right now i still don't think of him as like how actually how old is he 
Is he like? I would wager twenty seven, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Let's see, is he twenty fifteen draft? I believe so. That sounds right. But yeah, we don't we don't think about him anymore as being a future superstar or like future all star or anything. And so I wonder, should we or is or is he just like? What, what is going to happen with him? How long is his contract running on the Celtics? It's it's pretty short. Uh, the one he renegotiated with for in Boston, if I recall correctly, because the the question was like, all right, you're made of glass and you just had your career year. It would make sense for somebody to like try and maximize that. Be like, give me four years, give me five years, even if I'm taking a little less money on an annual uh, sense, just like more money overall and like a longer guaranteed run in the league, even if like your health doesn't keep up. Um, Yeah, he's 28 right now. And I believe his contract is two years up in Boston. And so he'll be an unrestricted free agent after. (laughs) Whoa. Welcome home, Pablo. I've never seen you outside of your car before. It's a nice house you have there. Yeah, guys, I moved inside. I just remembered that... uh... That this one's video, right? Yeah, yeah. This one will be on YouTube. So, uh, first of all, if you guys are listening right now, go to YouTube.com slash State of the League. 36, 36 minutes. minutes 36 minutes. Pablo walks in through a door to, like, an audience applause track. Like, he's a guest star on a Disney Channel show back in the mid-2000s. Yeah, shout out, shout out to my house. But, uh, yeah, Porzingis. Wait, so how long is the contract? Do we know? Uh, he's under contract through 2025, 26. So he, he renegotiated for two years, $60 million extension. 25, 26. So is he a free agent in 20 in the summer of 26? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, That'll be interesting. I wonder, I wonder how much, I wonder if someone will max him out. I wonder if someone will be like, this is our guy. This is our franchise player. I suppose it depends on how the next two years go. Um, yeah. Because uh, there's, like, also a lot of questions about, like, if, if they win a championship, does it then just become, like, I want to make as much money as I possibly can? Is he already in that mode? Is he not, like, super worried about winning a championship? I don't know. There's just a lot of shit like that going on. Um, The last favorite thing I had for the Celtics, and I didn't even write down a hater thing for them, so that's my fault. Uh, I said – Using the Hawks game for live practice defensive reps. That was fun. <laughs> I, I haven't seen a team be that good in a long time. So, yeah, shout out to that. Yeah, I saw someone on Twitter pointed out that uh, it's the same. The difference between uh, the one seed in the West. Is it the Nuggets right now? The, uh, yes. The difference between the one seed in the West and the 10 seed which is the Warriors, I think, uh, is the same as the Celtics and Bucks at the one-two seed. So they are they are lapping the competition. Um, yeah. uh, my my last two things were Derek White hype. It's good to see Derek White now. Now it feels like Derek White is a household established name, mm-hmm. but for a while there, he was he was just he was just hey the all the nerds were like, have you seen Derek White in San Antonio? Hey. He averaged 16 points on 60% true shooting against Denver in that playoff series a couple of years ago. This guy's really good at defense. Now now he got to the Celtics, so people started paying attention. They're like, this guy's awesome. So shout out to Derek White. And shout out to the documentary crew. I'm glad they have somebody filming. Yeah, this is whatever happens this year. I'll be excited to tune into that documentary. And Derek White... I, I say often um, bad teams should not be allowed to have good role players. Uh, and Derek White, this is like the ideal uh, character arc for him. is like bad team, <laughs> horrible team. The Spurs stink. They're barely scraping into the playoffs. Holy shit. DeJounte Murray's getting all the clout. And then he just goes, he just quietly goes up to Boston. And to be honest, uh, what is like, a more low key trade. Like I don't remember having a fairly big reaction to that at all. I wasn't super locked into Derek White when the move got made. And so uh yeah, it's been super impactful and he's been really good. 16 points, 5 assists, 62% true shooting with 2.3 stocks since November 24th of 2023. He's 40% from 3 on 7 attempts per game. Just like a perfect backcourt player for what the Celtics need. 
What did they give up for him? Just like a first rounder? Um, probably something stupid too. Like some some player that will be like, oh, remember that guy? Remember that guy? Celtics, Derek White trade package. In February, uh, Romeo Langford. That's who I was oh. thinking about. Yeah, Romeo Langford, Josh Richardson, a 22 first round pick and a 2028 first round pick in exchange for Derek White. Big big time high school player, Romeo Langford. Yeah, that was a name that like you just heard all the fucking time back in the day. Romeo <laughs> Langford. And it's got star potential. Like if Romeo Langford was an all NBA player, that would make perfect sense to me. But just never panned out that way. I wonder how old he is now. Probably too old to become a rotation player at this point. But I hope he does. Hope he figures it out. Do you have any final thoughts on the Celtics? No. All Get right. him out of with this timestamp. Timestamp. 40-32. Damn, we're 40 minutes in. We're on the second seed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You guys are getting your free money's worth this week. I'll tell you what. Um, The Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks. One and three in their last four. Uh, they beat. Oh wait, it auto corrected. I don't know who they beat. My my notes say <laughs> win. Oh, my my notes say win overhauls, and then they lost to the Lakers, Pelicans, and the Wizards. Fraud watch. No Dame win for the Wizards over, loss. Did they beat the Hawks or no? Who's win over? Uh, they did. They did. They did beat the Hawks. That's who it is. Yeah, okay. you reminded me because uh, the Hawks they were on that Celtics run, and then they face the Bucks and it didn't go super well. Um, yeah, no Dame for the Wizards loss. Not exactly <laughs> an excuse. Um, the Wizards are not good, and they still had Chris Middleton and Brooke and Bobby Portis and Giannis and everybody, and it just did not really matter. They could not get the job done against Washington. Um, the first thing I liked about their season is that this feels like probably the floor of what this roster could be close to it at least and it's still one of the best teams in the eastern conference and it as far like outside of like a, ser- a serious injury to Giannis or Dame it doesn't feel like much more could have gone wrong for the Bucks this year between like all of the coaching troubles they started with with Griffin and firing Terry Stotts and then just having an underwhelming start to the season and then they're like all right well this guy's out of here who do we got left fucking Doc Rivers okay let's pick him <laughs> up and so yeah, it's just uh, – it's not a great start to the Dame Giannis pairing, but the fact that there's still the second seed in the East, uh, that's that's like looking up to me. Um, yeah, my my first thing that I like about the Bucks is Doc Rivers' drama. It's been funny the entire way through. He's like, <laughs> man, I've been hired as a consultant for this team, and then I'm – what? They're firing their guy, and they want – me to take over as head coach what little old me i'm just a consultant i don't know i guess i'll take over this job <laughs> i wouldn't wish this job on my worst enemy this is the hardest thing i've ever had to do um so he it's it's just great doc don't Rivers, don't forget like, uh the quote hey we want to hire you and i told him what are you doing and they <laughs> did it anyways <laughs> <laughs> what a what a legend he i don't know how he got i don't know i thought we were done after the sixers i i wonder if he thought he was done because he took the the broadcast job i don't know but somehow we're back and and like even even today I, there was a quote that we just watched before the podcast where he's like hey you know what we're actually bad on the road because the travel staff i'm watching everybody i'm watching the staff so he's he was already throwing the staff under the bus. So we're going to see the get guys this year does not count at all. It actually, it doesn't matter that they're, they're actually doing worse <laughs> than they were with Adrian Griffin. Now what, they're like 14 and 14. Um, uh, they're 15 and 14. Uh, wait, 15 th- 14. that, that might've been before the loss to the wizards last night. I don't remember when I saw that stat, but right at around 500. Yeah. So this, but, uh, how were we? I mean, come on. What were we supposed to expect? This is new, new coach, new team. He didn't even want the job. Um, this year doesn't even count. It, he didn't even get to pick the staff. The staff sucks. All the guys suck, and he didn't even <laughs> he didn't even bring them. So what? Are we, it's impossible to win under under these conditions. 
Yeah, exactly. I only have two top 15 <laughs> players. Uh, I don't know. I, I wonder where Dame ranks right now. But regardless, uh, yeah, Doc Rivers, not the ideal hire. Um, you do wonder if there is a timeline where they just bring Budenholzer back. They just bite the bullet yeah. and they're like, Still we're sorry. In, in yeah, Milwaukee. well, I mean, they have. They have three. They have Budenholzer, they have Griffin, they have Doc Rivers all on the payroll right now. Um, and so I wonder if we're going to – is Doc Rivers just like a one-year deal? Do you know off the top of your head? They signed him to big a big extension. He's like the fifth highest paid coach in the NBA now. Holy shit, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. The report uh, that I pulled up says <clears> – <throat> They're in, they're nearing the range of a forty million dollar extension that would run through twenty twenty seven. Oh nah. my god! Um, so yeah, I wonder if they'll have four head coaches on the payroll at one point. That could be fun. That could be interesting. I would definitely coaching put that super on the team. Coaching super, the coaches can play in the games. There's no rule against it. Don't try to tell me otherwise. Uh, and I was we get, thinking like, they all coach at once, but that, I guess <laughs> that works too. <laughs> they all. Co- it's like a. Fuck, have you? What's that movie, Pacific Rim, where you need like two oh, I people? I, I haven't seen it either, but like the only thing you need to know is the big robots. You have to have two people in them to run it at this, to like uh, one person's brain. It doesn't have the capacity to operate this giant robot. So you need two people like wired in at the same time. You have mm. all four coaches wired mm. into like a supercomputer of some kind that's like, all right. This is the pick and pop that's gonna win us this quarter, guys. Lock in. It's like breaking. And that down last all these- coach, the fourth coach, Phil Ooh. Jackson. Oh shit. Okay. I was thinking Pat Riley, and he just doesn't know both. what's going on. Starting he's five. like, he's like, Miami's really cold today. And they're like, it's Milwaukee, <laughs> Pat. Or is Pat Riley? Are we going Pat Riley dementia? I th- <laughs> <laughs> The way people talked about him in like a trade deadline reports, it's like like he was borderline Joe Biden. They're like he was asleep <laughs> at his rotary telephone at 7:30 p.m. the night before the trade deadline. Um, GMs wouldn't stop ringing, and he he just couldn't wake up to pick up the phone. Um, I don't know. As far as dementia goes. The Terry Rozier trade, that's a great hit if you're operating on dementia brain. Like that's that's a that's a wonderful package you got. So yeah. Um my second thing. Oh, I said Chris Middleton's absence displaying his value. You really feel it uh now that he's back running the two-man game with Giannis. Jackson Frank had a good tweet where he's like, clearly the best actions that Milwaukee has right now are Dame running the pick and roll the pick and roll with Brooke Lopez. And then Middleton running the pick and roll with Giannis. When Dame and Giannis run together, it's fine. It's not like the car crash some people have described it as, but it's not this super effective set that you had expected it to be when you picked up Damian Lillard in the offseason. And so having Middleton being able to run that pick and roll, being able to get the ball into the paint and get the ball to Giannis effectively while having Dame off the ball, ready to space the floor. Um, when that hasn't been there as an offensive go-to for Milwaukee, like it hasn't been for long stretches this season, he hasn't been particularly healthy. Um, you've really felt it. And so I feel like Middleton, a guy who over the past couple of seasons, since the Bucks won their ring, it probably became a little bit underrated. I feel like he's getting his flowers this year. So I like that. Yeah, I, I also, one of my five things is I wrote – The Giannis Dame pick and roll when we do see it and when it works is cool. So that it's 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 it there's some good moments, but definitely definitely lackluster. It's just uh it's so dumb because like you when it does work, it's like oh shit, and then uh you just don't see it for like 20 minutes. Like they don't even try it again for a while. It's like okay. Um, They spanned it versus the Clippers, like how long ago was that? Hmm. Uh, the the last like the, a week and a half or two weeks ago. Okay, I didn't I didn't watch that game then. I was uh, the last Clippers game I remember was when Dame beat him by himself, and that that was like a cool good win for them. But obviously, you can't spam the pick and roll with the roll sitting on the bench. Um, so do you want me to go with my next favorite thing, or do you want to go since 
I I'll, I'll kind of stole your one. thunder. All right. I'll throw out one. I like the Malik Beasley funny bad defense. Uh, there's there's been a few videos of him this year where he's just like getting getting killed on defense. So I like that. Yeah, it's always funny when a bad defender tries really hard. And uh, Malik Beasley fits that mold perfectly. Like, super engaged, active hands. Like, he's waving them everywhere. And then, like, his guy just blows by him with no no resistance at all. So, yeah, uh, that's that's tough. Um, mine, my next one, I said Bobby Portis and Pat Bev being on the same team. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Um it's not. It's not like when a yeah, pickup. This is Bill Simmons mode here. I pick up basketball. Ah. Um, it's not like when the two best guys get on the team. It's when the two most annoying guys get on the team together. There have been moments where, like Bobby Portis, already if you let Bobby Portis score like seven straight points, he will bring the fucking house down, screaming in your face. Uh, and so, like when Pat Bev is also on the floor, and they can kind of like echo chamber off of each other. It's just uh. Yeah, it's like a, it's like I don't know. I'm trying to think, what's two things that really boost each other? Maso uh, Menos from Teen Titans. Do you remember them? Oh yeah, <laughs> are they the, are they the kids who like run fast? Isn't that their thing? But they have to be touching each other or some shit. Yeah, they have super speed, but only when they are touching each other's fingers. That's so dumb. Um, because like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, not the worst superpower in the world. There's some pretty bad ones out there, but I mean, it's not you the- you have you don't if you touch someone else, you don't even get super speed. You're just regular speed all the time. So I think it's kind of funny that you're making fun of someone who does have access to super speed. You're right. You're right. What can I say? Uh, there are at least some practical benefits to super speed. You could hold hands and run to the store or something. I just don't mm. know. If I was trying to combat like a super villain and they're like, just get these guys apart, throw a grenade between them and they have to go. They, they always just like they throw one of their teammates into them and then they split up. <laughs> that, that's so funny. Easy double play right there. You take the bruiser of whatever superhero team they're a part of and then you just launch them into the fast guys and they fucking they like can't hold hands anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. OK. Um. Yeah, so that's what I had. The Maso Menos of the Milwaukee Bucks, I suppose. They just, uh, yeah, they really complement each other well as far as, like, junkyard dog vibes go. Uh, my next one is Pat Connaughton, Real Estate Enemy. I liked that I learned this year on the Milwaukee Bucks subreddit that Pat Connaughton is an enemy in the city of Milwaukee. He's like, I want to de- I want to demolish these historic buildings and I want to build my real estate and everyone in Milwaukee's like this guy sucks and that he's pl- he's not playing well right now so this <laughs> makes it even worse I think he's turned it around since then uh, yeah. but there was a while there he was shooting like 20% from 3 and he's he's like going to board meetings and he's like tear down this building that's been here since 1890 or whatever <laughs> or someone's like he's dumb as a rock he doesn't even speak at the meetings his dad does all the talk i'm like oh my god i love this little, <laughs> little drama that i'm that i would have never uh considered th- th- existing before yeah that's baseball pat Connaughton poking out there uh mm-hmm. the real realist i i wonder what the pipeline is there from like baseball player to real estate developer it's probably pretty solid but uh yeah so fuck that guys if you if you have the option to not go into real estate developing probably a good idea not to do it you have to make some pretty pretty questionable moral decisions at times so just leave it to pat he'll make all the money and you'll have a nice new gray laminate apartment to move into in a couple of months that's gonna be perfect Um, go into drilling they can't teach astronauts how to drill but they can teach drillers how to astronaut is this a is this a an Armageddon nod yes, that we're getting? I've, at? Never, I've never seen it, but I saw a funny clip of Ben Affleck talking about it. it, it was Dude, like the, the director's commentary that just got put on my movie list because my girlfriend's never seen it. Eat fucking rocks if you want to just have like a good time like watching the dumbest fucking movie you've ever seen. There's so many great. Uh, there's so many great moments. Um. Michael Clark Duncan, you know the big black guy from the Green Mile? I don't know. I didn't see the Green Mile. Uh, I don't know what else. He's been in anything else? He's been in that in Armageddon. That would be it. I'm not aware of him. 
Well, there's just <laughs> Bruce Will. I mean, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for Armageddon. Something happens at the end that's tearful. And Michael Clark Duncan looks out the window of their spaceship and he goes, You the man. And it like the nice. music swell the music swells dramatically. And I, I've always thought that was so insane. Oh uh, yeah, that movie fucking rocks. Um <laughs> ben, all right. Ben Affleck is so funny. He's like he, when he's have you seen the the clip where he's talking in the director's commentary about it? No, I've never seen the clip. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen the director's cut. <laughs> You see, it's just, I guess it's just at the part where the the drillers are like first brought to NASA and he's just talking about how ridiculous it is. He's like, you can't teach them. You can't teach astronauts to dig a hole. What, what is it? What, they can't figure it out. <laughs> it was, it was, it was good. Um, but yeah, and then my, my last thing is the NASA's funny moments. I love that this guy is just around in the NBA because his brother is that good that he's like, you have to keep my brother. And they're like, okay. And so okay. he's just at the end of the Bucks bench, he's just animated. Uh, when he gets in the game, he does psychotic things. He tries to go all out. Um, he's, he is, he has to have the ratio. He has to be the most energetic defender in history. That's playing no defense at all. Like he's going all <laughs> yeah. out, jumping everywhere, sweating. Like he, he's got, he's expending calories not making an impact he's always in the wrong spots they're they're always getting by him um and uh i love that he has a podcast now the analysis so he's 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 living a great life yeah that right i mean yeah as far as like just like chill life i wouldn't mind getting in the life lottery having your brother be one of the best nba players on the planet which, like, how do you think Giannis' other brothers feel? Like, he's just like, uh, I can really only demand one roster spot for my family, <laughs> guys. So, um, everybody else. I know he's got one that's, like, college-aged, I'm pretty sure. But there was there was a different one that was on. Like, Alex Antetokounmpo was on the Lakers for a while. So that was that was Costas. Ah, okay. My fault. My fault. He, yeah, he, I think Thanasis is probably the second best one. He's probably more, but I don't know for sure. It's because Costas played at Dayton and then he might be playing in like the EuroLeague now. I think Thanasis played in the EuroLeague as well, but I don't know if he was good down there. Um, mm-hmm. But those two are legit. Alex, as far as I know, I think Alex, Alex is playing somewhere prof- professionally. Like, I think he, he bypassed college and he went okay. somewhere smaller professionally. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do anything. Actually, no. If I was that big and if I was good at basketball, it would be cool to just play in like some smaller league and just, just still dominate be rich. everyone. Like a uh, uh, rich brothers. Like when Magic Johnson bought like a Spanish mm. professional league team at thirty eight or whatever. And then, so just so he could suit up for them for a couple games, and he averaged like seventeen assists over three games or something like I, that. I think it would. I think it might have been like Norway or something. I think it was somewhere up there in Scandinavia. Yeah. Spain, Spain, Spain sounds too good. Uh, they have they yeah. have good like professional basketball in Spain. So Scandinavia, a little their their focuses are outside of basketball. So yeah, maybe old Magic Johnson could still dominate there. All right, my hater thing. Damn, we gotta keep this pushing. Uh, I said fifteen and fourteen with Doc Rivers. The Damianis pairing has not been the overwhelming force of nature many people predicted, and I would largely consider this season underwhelming for the Bucks, despite a high seed and a good record. That is my hater take on them. It's, it's valid. Get them out of our face. Time stamp. Get them out of our face. The Cavs, two and two in their last four losses to the Nuggets and the Hornets. Wins over the 76ers and the Jazz. Favorite things to start, I said, um, Jared Allen, even though we, in the Jazz game, they did just cook together. Jared Allen, without Mobley in the lineup this season, 17 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists on 65% true shooting. One of the best big men in the league, one of the best defenders in the league. Uh, there was not a ton of question marks because he's just not a guy who like generates a ton of media coverage to the point where he gets scrutinized. They're like, hmm. Is he really like that? It was just a a stretch of pretty uninspiring play dating back to the New York series that uh, 
he kind of dispelled with this little run the Cavs had. I, I loved seeing him cook again. I think he's an underrated passer. I think he's – I wouldn't call him an underrated defender, but he fucking rocks protecting the rim, and he's super fun to watch. Um, yeah, I just love Jared Allen. And I, I don't know I don't know what they're going to do this offseason, but it was fun to watch him cook. Short roll master. He was one of my five things as well. Um his season this year will go unnoticed probably because of Gobert and Wemby, but um, he's right up there with them, I think, probably in like tier one rim protectors and defenders. Uh, he's been awesome. And so I think we know that a team can be anchored by Jarrett Allen and he can be uh, okay. a good offense player when you have all shooting around him. The question is, what what happens when they play a, a four man who doesn't shoot? But I don't know. We still don't have that answer. But uh, Jared Allen is great. My another one of my things, Donovan Mitchell with space. What a what a what a recipe for success. Eighteen mm. to one or whatever it was. Um, Donovan Mitchell, he can hit pull up threes. So you got to come up on him. Then he runs by you because he's too fast. You send two. He's splitting them. Um, he, you, you try and block him at the rim. He's dunking on you. He's uh, and you, you send multiple bodies. He's throwing skip passes. So Donovan Mitchell with space is fantastic. Um, he he really propelled that run. He's really, I don't know if he's, a, he's probably not a superstar, but he's he's a star. He's a really high level star player. Um, and. He proved to us that when you have the right personnel around him, things things go well. Yeah. If there's like if there's like five superstars in the league, and then there's like a bubble of like twelve guys around the superstars, I would feel I'd feel comfortable putting Mitchell in like that second group. It's this season. He he was incredible. Um yeah, he was one of mine as well. Specifically just like his passing ability. I didn't realize he had it like that as a passer, but uh like he seven assists over the eighteen and two stretch of uh, wins by the Cavs and all of his kickout passes, a lot of really good pick and roll. It has to feel so good after like running pick and roll with Gobert for years and being like every time I hit this guy directly in the hands, it rolls out of bounds, and then you switch over to Jared Allen, who has like <laughs> some of the best catching hands in the league, and. Uh, yeah, that, that was just incredible to watch. 29-7-5 with two steals on 63% true shooting over the 18-2 and two stretch by Cleveland. Um, and to be honest, how they've looked in his absence, in and out, his in and outness over the course of the past several weeks since then, a stupid MVP case, definitely, but like one of the most impactful players in the league this season, no question. Yep, my my next guy would be Sam Merrill, JJ Ooh. Redick. If they gave him minutes, that's all I'll say. Oh, I got I got Sam Merrill numbers for you, baby. In games Woo! playing at in games playing at least twenty two minutes, we are looking at thirteen point four points per game, two point oh, yeah. nine assists per game, forty three percent from three on over oh, nine yeah. attempts, sixty four percent true shooting, and a sixteen and five record in those games. And so, yeah, he was a revelation in small minutes. I don't know if he will be a starter next season, but uh, Bickerstaff, wake up, man. Wake up to what the people are telling you. Um, you could be making Merillions of wins, but instead you're you're losing Merillions in the stock market by letting all, letting all these stocks just sit on the bench. It's so sad. Um, okay, yeah, he was on there. Please trade for Jarrett Allen and Sam Merrill. Do it. You have the package. I, I don't even know. Would it? It's just so confusing. Like they would it'd probably be mostly draft draft based for them, but the giddy piece this offseason is kind of confusing to me, especially because he started to play at like a high level the level where teams would start to overlook all of the accusations and everything. Um where they might like entertain adding him if they're looking to get rid of a guy like Jared Allen, who just hasn't really fit with the rest of what they're trying to build for the future. So yeah, I don't know. Um, my last thing I said, I think the win streak this year compared to the Clippers, uh, you can build on this one. Even if you have like a disappointing postseason. so much of your team is still very young. 
you're moving to the future. You haven't really peaked as a roster yet, or you at least hope that you haven't. Whereas with the Clippers, everybody's fairly old. Paul George is a free agent. James Harden, you felt like lucky to get that level of play out of him, to be honest. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it just feels like even though both teams are in a similar situation, losing momentum heading towards the postseason, the Cavs still have a brighter future. Terrence Mann, pushing 30, sneaky. Um, yeah, the it's there's definitely maneuvers to pull. Whether we don't know what direction they'll take, but but they they've got options. Um, shout out Isaac Okoro up to 39 percent from three. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's uh, I don't know, just like the Stifling. ideal. Yeah, the, the ideal guy you would throw. He, he doesn't need the ball. He likes to play defense. He de- he shoots fairly well now. Um, I don't know, 39%. That's really good. The volume, what is it, three attempts? Pretty low. Uh, I yeah. don't know what it is. Hey, but 39% is 39%. That's all I care about. Um, my hater thing... I said oh. the vibes are sh- the vibes are shit heading into the playoffs. Their elite defense has completely crumbled in recent weeks. Mitchell's been wildly inconsistent health wise, and it's become very apparent how much this team relied on his elite offensive production to survive. And then I don't know if you saw it uh, after the Nuggets loss or like mid Nuggets loss, he screamed, "It's fucking April! We gotta get it together!" And so Ooh. I I think I think. Most of the reports are like Mitchell's going to resign all this shit. I don't think we need to start heavy speculation on this topic or anything, but yeah, Ugh. just doesn't feel like we're set up to have a very happy go lucky off season. If the Cavs don't do something substantial in the playoffs. Yeah. Movement definitely possible. Could they, could they be the ones to pry Macau bridges away from the Brooklyn Nets? Donovan Mitchell, for Mikel Bridges, Garland Bridges, Jared Allen looks good on paper. Probably won't. Probably not dynamic enough. And and Evan Mobley. I don't know. I'm, I'm I mean, throwing out misinformation. Be, is it going to be Donovan Mitchell and ten first round picks? Because otherwise the Nets are hanging up the phone. It's it's Mikael Bridges we're talking about here. This isn't this isn't ch- some chump like Luca that you could just throw around like a trade piece every now and then. This is a generational guy. Good news um, for the Cavs. They won't be running what? into Bryce Sensible in the playoffs. Cooked them. Cooked them to the tune of a 20 point loss. I mean, one, my, in the words of Giselle, actually, I won't quote that, but Giselle, not me saying this, but Giselle once said, My husband cannot throw and catch the ball. And so Bryce Sensible is not my husband, but my idol star <laughs> basketball player. He can't, I mean, he can't score all the points and, and defend all the points. Be realistic. I mean, Devin Booker dropped 70 in a loss. Michael Jordan dropped 64 in the loss in the Garden. Did he win that game? I don't know. Um, He definitely no, – no, I think he did. He lost He lost the big scoring game against Boston, but he won the double nickel game. That's what I was thinking of. The, the 80s and Michael Jordan, he just got his butt whooped the entire time. So that's that's like that's, the That's the right. Bryce that He's, we're in right now. That's the Bryce Sunspa arc that we're in. Okay, cool. Um, get him out of my face. Time Time stamp. Oh my God. Um, all right. We're moving to the Orlando magic two and two in their last four. They beat the blazers. They beat the Grizzlies. They lost to the Clippers. They lost to the warriors. One of my favorite things I said, are young teams usually this good defensively in the past 20 years, only the 2004, 2005 Chicago Bulls have been. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah, the 2005 Bulls, baby. Remember them? Um, who is only on there? That's... Tyson Chandler. Who else? Ben Gordon? I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't. Let's look it up. I'll pull up the roster real quick. 2004. Let's see if I can four. name all the starters, the starting five. All right. I got it here. All right, Tyson Chandler's got to be on there, correct? Um, he only started ten games. He played eight. <gasps> Did Eddie Curry start? Yeah, he started sixty out of sixty-three games. Oh, wow, uh, is Heinrich a starter by then? Yes, he's a twenty-four-year-old. He played seventy-seven games, started every single one of them. All right, we got two so far. Is Ben Gordon a starter by then? Um, nope. 
He's uh he played eighty he played all eighty two, but he only started three games. Mm, that might be his rookie year. I think he was in six man conversations as a rookie. Um, is Luol Dang there yet? Is he a starter? Um, looks like he's a part time starter. Looks like you're gonna have to name six guys to get all of the starters. Six guys. There, is is so Dang Luol, one of them or no? Yeah, Luol Dang. Luol Dang is one of them. Nineteen year old. Damn, Luol Dang. He's like a permanent forty year old in my mind. Man. He little did he know he had two hundred thousand minutes in 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 his future. Um, <laughs> is Andres Nocioni there? Ooh, okay. Uh, he is there, but he's the eighth guy on the roster. He played eighty one games. He started thirty eight. Crap. Um, let's see who else was part of that team. In 2005, Jamal Crawford's not there, is he? No. 2005. So how many am I, am I missing? I'm you're, missing you're, the starting We're looking four. at two. We're looking two. at two. So you're missing a yeah a power forward um, who was 36 years old this season. Oh. And then it, you are. <laughs> it's not Ben Wallace, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> um, And then it's, fuck. You're missing a 22-year-old point guard. Okay. Um, Brad Miller, is he there? Nope. I can give you I'll give you first names of both. Maybe you could get them. Okay. We're looking at Antonio and Chris. Oh. Chris Duhan. Okay. Antonio No, is it what's his name? From the Pacers? Antonio Davis? Yeah, you know ball, baby. Thirty-six-year-old Antonio he, Davis. I did not know he played for the Bulls. Oh my God, what a what a what a time! Yeah, he started he started sixty-two out of seventy-two games in two thousand five. So, okay, so back to my point about the Bulls. Uh, in two thousand four, <laughs> two thousand five, that's the first time, or the Magic are the first time since then that a team has been both. The one of the five youngest teams in the league and the second best defense in the league. Mm. Uh, the, the Bulls were the second youngest team in the whole league. The Magic are the fifth youngest. But to be honest, uh, I wrote down Joe Ingles probably fucks up their roster a little bit in terms of like average age to contribution to games. I don't think he's like he's a rotation guy, but I don't know. He probably fucks it up a little bit. So yeah, I think that that's cool that uh they just rock defensively. They have a bunch of really, really good defenders and their their games they're entertaining to me uh because I'm an ascended basketball mind who can enjoy Whoa. defense. I'm smart Whoa. and anyone who doesn't like it is stupid. But Whoa. uh I could see how this brand of basketball might be considered like a, a caveman rock fight. Of sorts. I'll say <laughs> that much. You're an old soul. You're like, man, I miss the days when we played lockdown defense and we, our offense sucked. <laughs> I miss those days. <laughs> Franz Wagner bricks like an 18 foot pull up. And I'm like, yeah, woo. We'll just get four <laughs> stops in a row, baby. He's from Europe. Did you know that? <laughs> He's a new guy. We, 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 we have basketball over there. This guy. <laughs> oh, um, that rocks. Uh, shout out to one of my things is Jalen Suggs. So if you guys remember, let's go back before this season. It's hard to mm -hmm. even comprehend now. Oh, my God. But people were dead. and Jalen Suggs was dead in the water. People were like, bust. We hate this guy. This guy sucks. The, the advanced metrics, oh, did you know he's at the bottom of the league? Did you know he's literally the worst guy in the league? Did you know he sugs? Did you know that's his last oh, name? Oh, he sugs my balls? Yeah, he sugs. Um, oh, guess what? Now he's 12 points, three rebounds, two assists, or actually that might be flipped, I don't know. Um, but he's shooting 40% from three on five attempts per game massive shooting leap when you and he's shooting 67 percent at the rim and uh in terms of the shots that he does take like his shot frequency at the rim is good he's just not taking a whole lot of shots overall um so but all that to go along with elite defense like i've seen this guy almost single-handedly win games through he's got one of the highest running motors in the nba and he just makes winning plays constantly. Like, he's the new Kyle Lowry in that sense, I suppose. Um, he's just a fantastic player. And it's it's good. 
it's good we we hit on Jalen Suggs. He's great. Yeah, that's actually that's damn near what I wrote down for him. I said he was an interesting. He's turned into an interesting draft pick hit, where it's like, is he is he like ideally what you want to get out of a fifth overall pick? Not not really, not like that level of guy. But at the eighth pick, you did get that level of guy with Franz Wagner in the same draft. So in the aggregate, it it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, and on top of that there's not really that many people who went after him that like you're immediately like, yeah, I would rather have that guy. Um, He went fifth. Giddy went sixth. That's oh. one I like, I hesitate on. I'm like, Giddy, there's like, no, he's some for talents. sure. Giddy. Well, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. Like uh, I, that's recency bias with Giddy's uh, recent level of play, but it doesn't matter. Cause I fuck Giddy. Like, I don't care. Um, I'm so well, spilled. I, I'm Suggs pilled, baby. Kaminga, Jalen Kaminga, Kaminga went at seventh. That one, I, that, I would go. Yeah, I would go Suggs still. Look good on the Magic. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> Imagine <him>. Holy shit, <laughs> he is out of the league in 30 minutes if he's playing with this. Because on top of that, Suggs is the only thing keeping this Magic team from being like not just the worst shooting team in the league, like the worst shooting team of the last five years, probably. Like they are <laughs> horrifically spaced. Um. So yeah, Kaminga went seventh. That that I, I I he's fine. He's good. Franz went eighth. I would take him over Suggs. Um, Shangun went 16th. I would take him over Ooh. Suggs. Trey Murphy went 17th. That's like same tier of guy. I would probably go Suggs because he's been uh, healthier and uh, better defensively, even though there's a lot of upside with like the 3 and D wing shit that Trey Murphy has going on. And then 20th, Jalen Johnson. I would I would still go Suggs, mm. but I, if you ask me again in like two years, I could see the answer definitely being different. But but that's another guy. It would be really rough for him in mm-hmm. in the Magic uh, ecosystem because he needs he needs like high level scorers to play off. Um, but uh, yeah, Paolo is right there, and he could just play off that. That's it's, one of the he, highest. He he could to an extent. He he actually could because Paolo does draw a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, my yeah, my next thing is Jonathan Isaac, elite defense. And he's played 52 games. The last time mm-hmm. I didn't realize he played like 75 games in year two or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was been... it was weird how he just completely disintegrated after that. Yeah, I think. Well, I think he was. I think he was injured before then too. I think that might be the outlier. I think. I <laughs> I don't know how how many games did he play. Look up Jonathan Isaac college stats and see how many games did he play at Florida State. Um, but uh, yeah, he played in fifty-two games. He's number one in defensive EPM, I think. Uh, Two point mm-hmm. steal rate, four point one block rate. So every time he's been on the court, he's just a menace. And I think he every, played thirty-two games, thirty-two okay. games in Florida State in one year. Right. So I mean, how many games? How many games are in the season in college? Yeah, that's like that's like the whole season. That's yeah. okay. All right. So shout out Jonathan Isaac, the new Bill Russell. Yeah. I, I wrote it. I wrote <laughs> Oh shit. Okay. The in the evil Bill Russell. Same yeah. basketball ability. Just uh yeah, don't talk to him off the court. Um <laughs> yeah, I wrote down Jonathan Isaac as well. Uh mildly healthy season, immediately one of the best and most impactful defenders in the league. And then I also wrote down Paolo's second year jump. No hater shit. He is like he's really, really, really good. Uh like there's all of the hater shit, at least from my perspective that I have put out is the fact that like people are like he is 100% an all-star. Like it's not even a conversation between him and Jared Allen or him and Scotty Barnes or whatever, just because of the magic seating, which he is a very big part of, but like there's a ton of things that have gone into the magic team success this year. So just taking a moment here, uh, one of like the, three best scorers 22 and younger i would say i don't have that list off the top of my head but i feel like i'm right there with when Binyama and uh Cade could make a push at it too if the three really starts to fall but uh just the physical tools and the agility that paolo's working with uh is fucking otherworldly and he's already a way better passer than i thought he was going to be at this point so that rocks um yeah 
he's really good. And so I understand why he was an all-star this year. That's what I wrote down for my last favorite thing. And then my hater thing, I didn't even write one for the Magic because we have hated on them so much. And I was <laughs> like, you know, I'll give him a pass this time. I My positive is the Paolo confidence they have. I am lower on his l- longer term, like, future superstardom i think a lot of people think it's guaranteed i'm just not Mm -hmm. there like he's not like it's not the same like when i look at the pelicans and zion i'm like i know it's there and like when i look at Wemby, i'm like i know it's there with paulo i'm not quite sure maybe i'll be wrong um but i do like either way the confidence that they have it because orlando it's been years of like Man, Alfred Payton, could this be the guy? Um, who else? Man, if Jonathan Isaac could just be healthy, this could be our guy. Like, it's, <laughs> it, how long has it been? Is post Dwight? What have they had? They had Aaron Gordon. It's, it's Aaron Vuk- Gordon and Vucevic. Vucevic. Are there two? Are there two like go to guys in my mind post Dwight Howard? And they got they got Vooch like immediately after Dwight Howard. I feel like so there wasn't even a like a long line of just like complete drought of high level players. It was like, they picked up Vucevic and then uh, it was just like, well, who's going to be the number one. This is like a number two guy. And like, they just like spent his entire quote unquote all-star prime or whatever, just like going through the Alfred Payton's and the Aaron Gordon's of the league. So yeah, that, that, that era was horrible. The, a team with the richest Jersey tradition in league history even though they only came around in the 90s so, oh, transformational life-changing jerseys then the, in the 2010s they're like what if we just wore disgusting gross ones instead of our cool timeless ones and mm-hmm. so it's good that they finally have guys they finally have someone who with Paulo, where they're jumping into the the online arguments and they're like our guy oh we're okay we don't have Wimby we have Paulo. we're okay we, have we don't have uh we have the next LeBron, so and I, that's good because I'll tell you what I I haven't had that guy since 2010, so I'd, it'd be nice. Loser, that's what you're saying. This segment like was right brought now. to you by my car, car turning, on. turning on and the timestamp. Ding 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 ding. We're going to the Knicks. Get him out of my face. Get out oh, of my I'll face, tell, Orlando. I'll rapid fire my last oh. two things. All right, give Anthony it, give it. Anthony Black, thing. Anthony Black, rookie. Great defense, 38% from three on very low volume. Um, and the stretch where Goga, Goga Batazzi was playing really good defense for them. And then now he gets DNPs because I guess Wendell Carter came back. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we have nowhere to put this guy. I don't, if I'm a team, I'm investing and in, I would like to see some Goga. I'd like to get some. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about days. that too. Um, because he was playing so well that I thought, I thought like they were going to seriously consider him versus Wendell Carter Jr. Because he's a better defender than uh, Wendell Carter Jr., a better rim protector. But uh, Wendell Carter brings you, like, more offensive shit most of the time. Uh, he's, like, yeah. a good – he's a good shooter and, uh, I don't know, smart cutter and stuff like that, whereas Goga is pretty much a good just a lob too. threat. Um, so, yeah. And it looks like they're going with uh, Wendell. So, yeah, I would be shopping around if I'm, like – I don't. I don't. If I'm the Thunder, I'll probably take a bigger swing on my center slot because you have so many assets you could target, like a Nick Claxton or whatever. Um, but like, if I'm a team that like I don't know doesn't have a, a million assets and I want to go look Pelicans. for a rotational center, yeah, the Pelicans. Holy shit, that would be a spectacular upgrade over Valanciunas with all the oh, perimeter said, guys they have. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, the Celtics. <laughs> Do they, I mean, Horford's old, so I guess. But the Celtics don't need any more talent. Don't let them get Goga. I, I want to. <laughs> I want to root for Goga. I don't want him to turn into some shit like that. Get them out of my face. I don't need it. One twenty-three. Ooh, we're cool. talking about. That's kind of like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ooh, I like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's one of the most embarrassing things about me. Um, oh, the what? are they an embarrassing band to like? Yeah, uh, I, I I think so. <laughs> um, there's just a, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like if you if you put, I would say like sixty percent of Red Hot Chili Peppers songs on in a car, people are gonna be like, "This is 
boom ba doom ba doom ba doom like just a ton of fucking funky bass. But uh, <laughs> they they got bangers. They got bangers. I'll say that much. The Knicks. Speaking of bangers, they don't have any this week. One and three that in the last four. They beat the they beat the Raptors. They beat the oh wait that's their only win. They lost to the Spurs, Thunder, oh. and the Heat. Fraud watch. Shea Gilchrist Alexander hit a game winner on them. Fraud oh. watch. Jalen Williams lit them up for like thirty three oh. and eight. Fraud watch. Uh, and then Rozier outplays Jalen Brunson for the Miami game. Uh, and Tom Thibodeau had a great quote after the game. They were like, Jalen Brunson was getting fouled, 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 fouled. And then he just walked away from the table. So, yeah, he, he was mad at the officials that game. Uh, what do you what do you like about the Knicks this year? Or do you have any thoughts on those games either? I don't have thoughts on those games. Get those games out of Fuck my face. Fuck those games. That's what I've yeah, been saying. Screw those games. Jalen Brunson's 60 piece does not matter. Um, OG and Renobi plus minus God. Uh, plus 297 in 17 games with the Knicks. Uh, it was the record for the highest plus minus through like every single game he played. It was like, this is the highest plus minus through this amount of games with the new team. I'm assuming it's still the record. Uh, with 17 games Mm -hmm. um but yeah every time he's played they basically won and he's been like a plus 20 so uh that that has been a great trade for them it seems like there's some lying going on in in the new york with the health situation like when is he (laughs) coming back now i don't know um but yeah he's been he's been a major bright spot for them yeah I put I put him in the Tibbs Infinity Stones. Uh, that's what I said. The one of my favorite things they're just assembling Tibbs Infinity Stones. OG Ananobi, Hartenstein, Josh Hart, uh, Achua to a certain extent as well. Just guys that like hustle, defend, and will play eighty minutes if they need to. Um. So yeah, OG Ananobi, you hit on the plus minus. Hartenstein in uh, Robinson's absence this year, the absence of Mitchell Robinson, he played 47 games and he averaged nine points, 10 rebounds, three assists, and two and a half stocks on 69% true shooting. Just like really, really good backup center. Very good in limited Fantastic minutes. Fantastic black center. Fantastic. I mean, one of the... One of the best black centers in the league. He's 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 a, a black guy. That's that's what they tell me. Who am I to tell? Who am I to tell him he's not? You know, I, he I don't identifies have, I, as bright skin. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if we should start introducing identifying his race into the that's cultural vernacular. Word. So hey, that's well. <laughs> the, the, we're not saying that but he is. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a quote. Um, yeah, and so then beyond him. Uh, Josh Hart, 12 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists in his last 23 games. Efficiency is ass, but he's just trying <laughs> his best. He's just trying his best to fill that like Julius Randle-sized hole in the offense. And to be honest, he's, oh, he's doing a good job. It's it's a big hole. Um, you know so, that yeah. Japanese game show where the hole in the wall is coming towards? Oh, they made an American one too, but it was lame. Yeah, it was on you Cartoon know, Network. I saw that. Hole. Yeah. You can't yeah, do that. I, I it's got to be I know on the one. TV. But yeah, if Julius Randles was, they cut out the hole for him. Would I'd, we'd have a good time fitting through that? That'd be that'd be a stress free hole. He's a big guy. Um, yeah, I I also wrote uh, I wrote Tibbs being Tibbs. I love that Deuce McBride went from averaging twelve minutes off the bench to Tibbs is like, all right, we got to start this guy. 43 minutes a game. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he has now played 563 minutes as a starter versus 608 as a bench player. So just a 40 minute difference. Um, How many games been, has he started? Um, he has started, I think like only like seven or I did write it down. I thought I did not write it down. I think he started like eight games or something. Oh my and then, God. Uh, maybe it's more. I don't know. Um, but it's it's really a crazy disparity, um, and I love that Tibbs. They traded for Bojan Bogdanovic, mm-hmm. and he's just like, I don't like this guy. Not gonna play him. <laughs> he's not. I don't know. I don't know what's the chi- what came first, the chicken or the egg. Like, did Bojan Bogdanovic struggle, and then Tibbs benched him, or was Tibbs just not in from the beginning? And he's like, ah, I don't know about this guy, um, but. Yeah, I love that he's just as psychotic as ever. 
What a what a crazy midseason pivot for Bogdanovich. Going for Monty Williams. Please fire me. Please fire me. I don't care what's going on with the team. Just let me go home. And then you get shipped up to New York and you're like, oh, I'm gonna be part of a playoff team. I'm I'm pretty good. This is gonna rock. And then it just I'm like day 20, one twenty, an efficient twenty this an season. Twenty percent on high volume from three. And then yeah, you just walk into the fucking locker room and Tibbs. That's gotta I don't know. He's he's so intimidating in like press conferences and stuff. Do you think <laughs> he's, he's if he's like that with the players, I would not want to be a guy who just got traded for. That would be like a scary transition for me. Um, so yeah, beyond all the Tibbs stuff, multiple shooter awakenings. That's what I said. Oh That's what I, okay, so we have obviously Deuce McBride, 29% Woo! last year. Nearly 42% on the season right now. I have his starter ship pulled up. He started eight straight games, 46% from three on 8.6 attempts in those eight games as a starter. So that's really chill, super dope. And then Dante DiVincenzo, last year he was 57th in three-pointers attempted per game. And this year he's fourth in that category. He's won a one of just seven guys attempting eight three-pointers a game and hitting 39% of them alongside Steph, Paul George, CJ McCollum, Larry Markinen, Duncan Robinson, and D'Angelo Russell. So, yeah, DiVincenzo, uh, especially when uh, Brunson went down and they just were desperate for offense, that stretch of the season was really cool to see from him. They have a guy who can explode and give you 25 on any given night if he gets hot from three and spaces the floor really well for a team that, especially with OG hurt, uh, they don't have like a ton of high level shooters, especially off ball, like Brunson's damn near 40%, but a lot of it is on ball creation. So yeah, that's just great to see. I love DiVincenzo. I think he's been a great story this season. The Villanova boys, the Italian boys, it all, it all works out for them. Um, Let's see. Yeah, one of one of my things was Deuce McBride. He's just been playing out of his mind. Uh, when you have a guy shooting this well from three, who also brings elite point of attack defense, that's pretty great. That's things are going well. So big time uh, steal for them. Um, and then my next bright spot would be Jalen Brunson, the new draft comp. Now that Jalen Brunson has worked out, now we can look at every single small guard and we can say. Could he be Brunson? I mean, look, look at his footwork. Look at it. Look at him in the paint. Oh my God. Jared this guy. McCain? Brunson S. Who's to the yeah. Could he be Brunson? He's small like Brunson. He plays off two feet like Brunson. He's got some, he's small, but he's got some thickness in his, in his, yeah, he's body, girthy. Just like okay. Jalen Brunson. Um, hey, Jalen Brunson was old coming out of college. Jalen Brunson's not a freak athlete. Jalen Brunson is small. So there's, there's a whole new genre unlocked. Every, and this is a draft where, Man, ESPN is famously like they'll throw out the worst draft comps possible, and this is going to be a draft that's stacked with small guards, so we could see it multiple times. So it'll be hell like, yeah. Reed Shepard, Jalen Brunson, Rob Dillingham, Jalen Brunson, Jared McCain, Jalen Brunson. This guy actually reminds me of Jalen Brunson. So that'll be a whole new genre. And then uh, my last thing would be. Uh, the game when Mitchell Robinson wrecked Wemby. Do you re- remember this? Um, vaguely. Must have been at the beginning of the season. It was, and and uh, Wemby hype was 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 in full full gear. And Mitchell Robinson said, "I'm gonna guard him like a mix of Porzingis and Bull Bull." And people were like, "What? Does he not know who Wemby is?" And then uh, he held Wemby to zero for six shooting. <laughs> so it's it <laughs> Yeah, Mitchell Robinson is so good. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like a fringe defensive player of the year guy next year if like all the health stuff lines up. Because uh, with McBride and if OG's healthy and all that stuff, and they're already so good defensively, if he's like anchoring it, I could see him getting a little bit of clout for that. Um, my last thing, I said Jalen Brunson's career year deserved an all-star appearance and got it this year. That's nice. 28.7 assists on 59% true shooting, 40% from three on nearly seven attempts. Um, my hater thing, I said the ceiling being reliant on the play of Julius Randle is something I have come to terms with but will never be comfortable with. Um, so 
that's just like that's the reality of the situation. I think the team rocks, but until Randall is like at least good in a postseason setting for probably two series, I'm just gonna feel shaky about it all. Uh, and then we have a lobby request: Who has more aura, S- SGA or Jalen Brunson, and, it's, and why? I'm gonna go with SGA here. Jalen Brunson, he's like a, a hard hat, lunch pail, blue yeah. collar kind of guy. SGA's got aura for days. All the cool Instagram captions, all the cool like modeling photo shoots and stuff like that. Jalen Jalen Brunson is not preoccupied with developing an aura the way that Shea Gilgis Alexander is. Yeah, it's completely different vibes. Like, if it's, like, an anime, Jalen Brunson is, like, the main character who, like, starts from nothing and is, like, plucky and and works as hard as he possibly can to be as strong as everyone else. Mm -hmm. And Shea is just, like, been naturally talented since birth. Since birth. Naruto versus Gaara is what I'm hearing. Yeah, except, yeah, except, I'll tell you what really bothers me about Naruto they pivot it, the the entire first half of the show when he's a kid the entire mm-hmm. message of the show is like i can do anything with hard work i'm a loser i'm untalented i can do anything as long as i believe i'm working harder than everyone else and then in the second half they're like oh actually child of the prophecy this was always going to happen he, this was predestined and then were- people try and retcon it they're like no the show was never about the show was never about uh like the less talented one wins because Rock Lee didn't beat Gara. But it's like you have to be delusional because uh, Naruto fights Neji and they have this whole speed. It, it's ridiculous. It was very clearly just a poor writing decision. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, all my Naruto fans out there. You actually like cringe and stupid shit. It's just a bad story altogether. It's dumb. Um, the best fights ever. Well, until we, until JJ, until they animate Gojo versus Sukuna, I guess you could say that he's coming <laughs> back. By the way, we got a we got a Ooh. we got a twelve hour lo fi stream Ooh. last night depicting scenes from his life, and now the airport's empty. He's coming Ooh. back. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, SGA SGA has more aura, definitely. <laughs> and you know these guys, you're in my face. Get out of oh. my face, please. Uh, timestamp. 136. Are we going to shit? My my timestamp note is messed up here. So who's the <gasps> next seed? Is it the is it the Pacers? Um, I don't have them written down by seed. So well, I mean, who's next in your in your thing? Uh, next up that we have not talked about would be oh yeah, it would be the Pacers. All right, all right, um, we can do Pacers. Let's do Pacers. Halliburton, he he became. Sort of an offensive superstar to start the year. He was going full Steve Nash mode. He was shooting like 40 billion percent on a billion attempts per game from three, um, getting a billion assists per game, getting negative billion turnovers per game. Wow. Uh, historic offense for this Pacers team. Um, everything that's his was reverse curse great. technique is negative a billion turnovers. That's that's yeah. how you reverse a billion assists. Okay, I see. I see what's going on here. They they had that epic in season tournament run. Everything was turning up Pacers, and then he got hurt, and then the but, hammy. But still, or for me, he's not on fraud watch. He's on injury watch. Yeah, we're. I mean, fraud watch won't happen until well into next season. If he if he comes out and he's kind of mid again, and to be honest. It's low key picked up a little bit in recent weeks. I mean, I know he was really good against the Nets. 27 points, 13 assists, zero turnovers on nine of 15 shooting, four of seven from three, five of five from the free throw line. So, yeah, 27 and 13 with one steal and one block. And I mean, the Nets suck, so it doesn't really matter, but he's, uh, I feel like it's more of an injury thing. He was one of my five things as well. Um, yeah, he's a superstar. I said Siakam has also acclimated well. Siakam, I blended it with acclimated there, and that's my fault. But yeah, nice. um, yeah, I've said it a couple times already, but just like making sure that he fits and everything, and like he's chill in Indiana, which I mean, according to 
according to Pablo, nobody can be. So like he's just gotta oh. be okay with he's gotta be okay with suffering. But uh yeah, getting him to a point where you're comfortable he'll re-sign, that was important, and it feels like that for me. So that's that's a bright spot. There is a rabbit staring at me. He's just sitting sitting under a tree looking directly at me. He's a good looking yeah. rabbit, but um, I just saw yeah. uh, there's a It's Always Sunny episode where they get lost in the woods and Frank oh. that he gets into a staring contest with a rabbit. Oh, I, I could I could do that right now if I wanted to, but I'm busy. I'm working. Um, what was the Siakam trade? I remember when it first happened, I was against it. But then I realized like he's for sure resigning. So I was like, OK, this is a good trade. Uh, it's three firsts, Bruce Brown. And I think that's like the major components of it. They, Three first Bruce Brown. Them. They fleece them. Bruce Brown isn't doing anything for them. Oh my god. Uh yeah, that that was a positive move for the Pacers. They got a good star. Um and, and yeah, I think I think this season has tanked, but I I think you're definitely feeling like you're in a really good spot if you're a Pacers fan. Um Ben Shepard, great great late round draft hit um played playing really good defense and the three-point shot is not even where it was supposed to be coming out of college he was supposed to be Mm -hmm. like really high level sniper kind of guy so if he can get back to that level that's great and then my last thing would be aaron neesmith uh defensive hound he's he's plays really hard on defense he's jacked and he's shooting uh 43 percent from three on five times mm-hmm. per game. So they've they've got some guys. It won't happen this year, but they've they've accumulated some guys. Yeah, that's a that's a good act uh, or amalgamation of all my final points. Uh, I said you still went from thirty five wins last season to now being on pace for forty six. So even like the injury to Halliburton made this season like it changed the tone of it pretty drastically, even more than just like the team kind of regressing to the mean of an average team would do. Uh, it made it feel like, oh, fuck, like this year's a waste or whatever. Um, but no, it's the, the the year. It's still like a very good step in a very good direction for a team that's generally really young. And then Neesmith, yeah, absolutely. Um, last year, he was 10 points per game on 56% true shooting, 36% from three on 4.3 attempts. This year, he's 12 points per game, 63% true shooting, 43% from three on Ooh. pretty much the same, like three three point seven attempts, something like that. So, yeah, he's, he's killing it. And if you want to see, like, the Heat fans and how much they hate, like, Portland and everything and how vindictive they are, Celtics fans hate that he is playing oh. well. Like, like, every game I see Celtics fans – where the fuck was this in Boston? What's your problem, man? Oh my God. All, <laughs> all that kind of shit. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm happy that Celtics fans are suffering. That's good. The world, the world is healing, baby. Uh, my hater thing. I said the timeline for this team. It's a little weird. Uh, if you look at like their most important players right now, Siakam's 29, Turner's 27, McConnell's 31, Everybody else is around 23. So, like, it's not a horrible situation. I'm just kind of curious how they're going to reckon with the fact that you're probably a couple years out from really being, like, a a noisemaker in the East and everything. And so, by that point, Siakam's going to be, like, 31, 32 maybe. Turner's going to be pushing 30. I don't know. There's just some shit that I will be keeping an eye on season to season as we move down the line with this team. But also, largely speaking, Neesmith's 24, Halliburton's 23, uh, Shepard is a rookie, like you mentioned, um, Matherin is 21. They they have a lot of good young guys, so I'm not worried too much about that. Do you have any final thoughts on them? Um, Jairus Walker, their first-round pick, has – I don't even know how much he's played for them this year, but he, he has potential he's to be good. a really you, good uh, defensive player. So yeah, they're they're in a good spot. So, but the you know what spot they are in? They're in our face. Get them out of there. Get them out of here. Timestamp an hour forty three, and we're looking at the Miami Heat, baby. The Heat Woo! this week, three and one in their last four. They beat the Knicks, the Blazers, the Wizards. They lost to the Warriors. Um, what do you think about the Heat? My first thing is I love Jimmy Butler's indifference. I love that heat culture is supposed to be like, we're the most intense team. We're the most hardcore team. 
we actually thrived in the bubble because it was like a survival killer be killed drill sergeant mentality and that's literally us and then meanwhile jimmy butler is like i'm sick and then uh, he goes to a tennis game instead of a <laughs> must win game versus the warriors uh he's in fallout boy music videos he is uh what'd you say he's riding a bike around Miami? a horse a horse a horse he's riding a horse yeah, like a Miami. white stallion He's starting up coffee companies, so and um, when he does play, he just doesn't shoot. <laughs> so I I love that he's just and like, they win they win by forty when it ha- he's like five <laughs> shots, but like that's what that uh that's what that Minnesota scrimmage must have felt like is this stretch we're in now, where uh not only did he pull up and he was super angry and he played with the the third team or whatever, but in the reports they're like he didn't even shoot, he was just blocking everybody. <laughs> and just passing in transition to all of the other guys who are finishing. So that's, I guess that's probably what this felt like a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I made a TikTok about Jimmy Butler and uh, how he like trolls the regular season and everything. And the point of mine, I made two points. I was like, first of all, uh, it's just funny to me that this would never, ever work in the Western conference in a million yeah. years. Uh, Cause like they're, they're chilling. They're a couple games up in the in the seven seed right now. Like Philadelphia has plummeted without Embiid and everything, so they're chilling in the seven seed with forty one wins, which would have you like fighting the Rockets and the Warriors for the ten seed in the West right now. So like just taking taking games off to go watch tennis, it only works in the East. And then my other point was like, dude, Bam Adebayo's got to be fucking exhausted just being like the I only love guy. That. Have you seen the memes they put out of like what he's doing when Jimmy Butler goes on these adventures? It's just like him. No, it's like just the like you can picture it just like I feel like it was Snoopy. I don't know, but it was just like mm-hmm. violently worn out, sweating on the ground. <laughs> like just he's getting demolished while Jimmy Butler is <laughs> taking vacation. Well, yeah, I mean, because between Jimmy doing that, and uh, Hero not playing. Hero just being unhealthy yeah. for, like, three straight years. Bam's the only fucking guy that, like, plays 65 games and tries hard the whole time. So it's just like, holy shit. Do you think he's ever like, Jimmy, could you lock in in February? Please? It could be cool. I don't know. No, because um, he yeah. has heat mentality. So he's like, I like the challenge. I wish, I oh, wish yeah. everyone okay. was locked in less so I could the... I'd be forced to lock in more. I love being uncomfortable. The toughest, grittiest, most hardworking team in the freaking NBA. Um, I need to be fighting for my life in order to have yeah. fun. Could you stab me, actually, please? Like when <laughs> when I post you up, could you just stab me like right in the kidney? Nothing lethal, but you know, make well, it make hurt. sure it's rusty. Yeah, make sure it's rusty. I got my shots. Don't worry. Um, my favorite thing I said the Duncan Robin Renaissance back and better than ever. Um. He returned from the bad contract shadow realm as a good on-ball creator and facilitator. Not only a career high in assists, but compared to his last like career year in 2020 where he was like 45% from three and that's when he got the big contract and everything. Uh, his unassisted his unassisted made field goals are like tripled since then and you can really <laughs> tell you can really tell when you watch the game just like Getting Which is guys. still a low number, but oh, it it's is, like fifteen percent. But it was like four yeah. percent in twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the fact that like he can do that. And it, there's like a threat of it happening that kind of changes the dynamic of him a little bit. And uh, it's not saying a ton. He is playing probably the best defense of his career, uh, just by being like not a huge negative. He's just like a neutral now instead. And so yeah. Mm-hmm. That's chill to see. Um, it was a bad contract for a couple of years. I thought it was going to go the way of like Davis Bertans, but no. I wanted the Bulls to trade for it. I was like, "This is the kind of thing we need. We just need someone who can shoot." I'll take. I'll take the risk. Look at him now. Now he's like Jason Williams handling the ball out there. Oh, <laughs> um, right. We did have we have a lobbyist request about something. Um, oh, Bam is putting together a really nice defensive stretch right now. Miami has the second best half court defense in the league when he's on the court, and the twenty seventh when he's off. God, he's never off. He doesn't sit. He plays all forty eight minutes, <laughs> baby. Um, I said that he is having an underrated defensive season. 
there are lineups. We've talked about before how small Miami is at times. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there are lineups where, like, him playing above his weight class, like, playing bigger than he is, uh, like, that's the only thing that keeps these lineups from looking absolutely fucking microscopic is the fact that when anybody touches the paint, he is completely all over them while dominating the defensive glass. So, yeah. Shout out to Bam. Already touched on his consistency. Already touched on his locked inness, his heat culture ness. We love him he, over he's here. He's probably never going to win Defensive Player of the Year, right? He's, he no. hasn't won it, right? No, he won't. Because uh, go bear, it's literally going to be like the go bear transition into Wembenyama. Even yeah. though, like him and Anthony Davis, to me, both clear like Marcus Smart and Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Those two guys have the award, so it's just a little crazy. Yeah, what a what a bummer historically. But uh, you know what isn't a bummer? Bam out of bio threes. He started I like that he started taking some more threes this year. Uh well, really not even this year, like this month. This past month. So that's cool to see. Um Jaime Jaquez is another one of my bright spots, even though he's he's hit a little bit of a rookie wall. Um, he's been cool to watch this year. Uh, he He's a guy, he looks cool. He looks like a main character. Um, he does. And so I think I think he'll probably be a good player because of that. And then um, I also mentioned the Duncan Robinson self-creation. And the final, the final thing I like is the Miami Heat subreddit spite. They have been angry Hell all yeah. year long. They've, it's never, there's never been any moment of peace of happiness. They, nobody... Has, has paid attention to the Portland Trailblazers season except for Blazers fans and Heat fans. And the Heat fans are just like, Scoot Henderson, I wish he was playing worse. I wish I wish someone would come in and kneecap that guy too. I wish, I wish, man. And, and every time Damian Lillard has a bad game, they're like, this, yeah. this guy, this, he's Glad ass. he's not on our team. We don't need I him. That guy. I'd rather have Jovic and, and Hakez. It would suck if we traded these guys for Damian <laughs> Lillard. So I love how angry. What? Why are they so angry? They, well, if you think family. about it, it's it's the most heat culture you can be to never so. never allow yourself like the the release of comfort or happiness or satisfaction to always not just like be looking elsewhere but to imagine to be envious elsewhere to imagine that other stuff is as good as it could possibly be and so through that imagination they they must cover it up with like oh damian lillard's the worst fucking player i've ever seen oh my god i'm so happy we didn't trade for his ass and shit like that so yeah that's uh that's greediness that's hustle grind set that defines the miami heat it's permeated into their fan base through these cool courts that they have it's hypnotism whenever they shoot free throws and like the motto that's built into the city court in the paint shows up the fans read it and they're like oh my god that's that's how i gotta live my life maybe we should imagine every single person is on coke in that subreddit they're all snorting it and they're all like that my brain's firing at a thousand percent. I need to go off on Jimmy on Damian Lillard, but um, get them out of our face. It's one. No, no, hold on, hold <gasps> on. It's scary in here right now. Have you, whoa, 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 that's scary over there because Terry Rozier is off screen, he's in the corner over there. Uh, I said the Rozier trade was my last bright spot. Besides, I, I did mention a little Haywood Highsmith, Heat Voodoo oh. Magic, but we, we'll we leave that off the list. I won't talk about that until it's playoff time and he's dropping 30. Um, Getting off of Kyle Lowry's contract by itself makes this a positive move. Uh, But since Rozier missed four straight games for Miami, he has been 18 points per game on 55% sure shooting, which isn't incredible but 39% on catch-and-shoot threes during this span, whereas through his first 10 games with Miami, he was 28%. So that was like a big question with the Charlotte trade is he was good at shooting threes in Charlotte, but none of them were like off-ball possessions. And so it was like, is this – like is he going to be the same kind of shooter? And for the first 10 games, he wasn't. Since then, he has been, and he's maintained four-and-a-half assists with just 1.4 turnovers – which is really good because uh, 
I don't know. The playmaking, the Heat really do like a lot of facilitation by team approach. Bam's a really good playmaker. Jimmy's a really good playmaker. Now Rogier is a really good playmaker. Hero, when he's healthy, he's a fine initiator. And so, yeah, uh, that's chill to just have another guy averaging four assists on the team. And he was just the best player on the floor in their win over the Knicks. Uh, he played really Ooh. well down the stretch. He had like 34 on 9 of 15 shooting or some shit like that. Uh, my hater thing, I said, is Tyler Hero ever going to be healthy? That's all I had for them. Get him out of our right. face. Get him. Whoa. Get him out of <laughs> our face. Someone just knocked at the door. Hold on. You know, let me pause. Oh, God. God. The Philadelphia 76ers, 2-2 two and two in their last four. They just beat the Thunder last night in Embiid's return, uh, and they also beat the Raptors, and then they lost to the Cavs and the Clippers. My favorite things about the Sixers season, not that many, but Embiid came back last night, and it's getting back on track, baby. Um, He was having one of the greatest seasons of all time prior to injury, so hopefully we can get back to that point. That, that is one of my favorite things about their season. I I could not think of five things. I couldn't think of four things. I couldn't think of three Dude, things. Dude, once, once, once we get things. down there, there's a couple teams that, like, there's not shit to like about their – I'm like, Trendon Watford, uh, I, I don't know what to like about this season. Joel Embiid God Mode, is. I like it. Maxi All-Star, uh, he's solidifying himself as, like, a, a really high-level complimentary player to Joel Embiid. I like that. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I don't know. There hasn't been much going on. I didn't like the Jane Springer trade. I like the Buddy Heald trade. Um, I don't but he's a free agent, there. so they have to re-sign him. Oh, true. It was it was just uh... and dude. That's that's one of my things. It's not even a thing I liked. Uh, Tobias Harris is an unrestricted free agent this off season, uh, and so like. He's not that good. He's not third option good. But you also can't lose him for nothing if you're Philadelphia. So it's just like pretty tough. Um, Before Embiid went out through 41 games, Tobias Harris was nearly 18 points, six rebounds, three assists on 60% true shooting. Uh, and in 25 games without Embiid, he was 16 points, seven rebounds, and just under three assists on 53% true shooting. So... Like, literally none of the stats you would expect to increase in the absence of a 36-point-per-game scorer happened at all. And all that happened was, like, his efficiency just went down. So, uh, yeah, pretty nasty shit from Harris this season in the absence of Embiid. Yeah, not not too much. It's, it's just been, man, we're on top. Our boy's going to win MVP. He just dropped 70 on Wemby, the fake face of the league. And then and then it got ripped from their hands. And now now they're back. 12 free throws last night, right? <laughs> I will, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a polarizing. Because all the aggregate accounts, Right back to the trenches. <laughs> yeah. Like, all of the accounts are like... They, they put the free throws in his tweet of his performance to garner just to like get more shit. And so like uh, all Sixers Twitter was just like, we're fucking back, baby. And bead free throws in the tweet caption. And so, yeah. Um, the only other thing I really liked besides Embiid this season was not just Maxi, but getting this experiment with Maxi at the wheel. Uh, like we no longer have to be like, oh, what if Maxi had his own team? That would look crazy. What would that look like? Doesn't look great, but the 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 numbers are still solid. He's like twenty six six and four on fifty five percent true shooting without Embiid, and he won't turn twenty four until November of next year. So he's he's Ooh. a gorgeous young piece to have oh. in like in like a well, I mean, young piece. I don't, of work. I don't know about I don't know about gorgeous. But he's got a great smile, <laughs> in, in, infectious smile. I'll say that much. When he's having fun, it's hard not to root for him. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I got. My hater thing, I said rushing back to try and make the title run with a team that went 14-27 and 27 without you could be the move. I guess we'll see. Could be the move. Could be the, could move. Be the move. Could be the move. I think they could move out of my face. Um, nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of this. Uh, all right, the Chicago Bulls, two and two in the oh. last four. 
Oh, they lost to it's funny, funny combination of wins here. Lost to the Hawks and the Nets, and then they beat the Pacers and the Timberwolves. Uh, so it's just like make up your fucking mind. Are you good or are you bad? Favorite they don't things. want to see us in the finals, Minnesota. Yeah, I mean that matchup, that's a nightmare matchup for them. Drummond versus Gobert. I know who I'm taking. Uh Kobe White and Dosunmu give this team a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny drop of hope for the future if the front office makes the smart choice to blow this team up this season. They've both been really good. Kobe White, he, I think Maxi is going to win most improved player. I think that's what the odds are saying right now. Is but, he uh, really? <laughs> I think. I'll, I'll look up the odds right now. Phil Air, that's talk. That's crazy. Because Kobe White has, like, if you look at Kobe White's stat line from last year, um, he has, like, doubled everything. It's, like, 19 points. This year he's nineteen five and five. Last year he was like nine two and two or something. Um, mm-hmm. He's shooting thirty eight percent from three on more attempts than last year. Um, yeah, career highs in basically everything. So and and yeah. Kobe Max White is, moves, Max is minus across the board. He's like minus two fifty, minus two hundred, minus two hundred. Like on DraftKings, FanDuel, everywhere, MGM, he's minus. Whereas Kobe White, closer to like plus one fifty. It's not impossible, but the odds at least say Maxi. It's weird because Maxi has been on a pretty consistent trajectory, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and- like Max, this this whole I mean, since the Harden trade, we were kind of like, oh, Maxi's up. Like this is he's been it's steadily less of- going up every year. So what? I yeah, Kobe White is like Psh, out of nowhere. I don't know. Guess guess he. I I I think the all-star thing matters so much to some people and like most improved players, not that one. It's not the award that like they dedicate a ton of brain power to. It's just kind of like a maxi, I guess. So yeah, but uh, I, I don't really, I don't have a ton of problem. Maxi d- without question, top three. Cause he did, he did improve from last year and it's not a guarantee that just because you get all of the opportunity, that comes with James Harden not being there. Uh, that's also like a huge hole in the offense that makes your life harder. And so to succeed in spite of that, uh, that's good. Good for them. Good for the Sixers. Uh, yeah. Um, what? Oh, I said DeMar DeRozan clutch player of the year. That's that's Ooh. a fun, that's a bright spot. He's been, he's been good. The whole team, it's not good when your team is in a clutch game every single night. Uh but it is fun. I'll say that much. It's not fun for me, but I think for in general, it would be, but when you know, it's all leading up to nothing at the end, then it's not fun for me. Oh my God. Winning, winning all these games that are, that it's just good. The, the memory ends there. It'll be like, man, remember that sick DeMar DeRozan game winner in January of, uh, 2024 when the Bulls were barely 500. <laughs> that was so awesome. So I I will not look back on this era. Fun. I will look back on Demar Derozan fondly. I will not look back on this era. Mm-hmm. Fun. Um, but a Iodesumu, like like you said, the good three and D guard, bright spot. I will look forward to him positively. Hopefully. Yes. Um. Uh, Drummond, yeah. No. Him and. <laughs> well, that's that's my third one. I said uh, Andre Drummond off the bench. If winning doesn't matter to you that much, super fun. Uh, he's tied. He's tied for the ninth most games in the NBA this season with fifteen oh, well. plus rebounds. So uh, yeah, oh, obviously, I'm, obviously, I'm obviously it, it, ninth most games. Wow, he's played a lot of games. <laughs> he's healthy. He's really putting it together this year. Uh, no, with fifteen plus rebounds. So that sandwiches him like right in between. I think. Maybe like Jarrett Allen and someone else. So those guys are essentially the same caliber of player. I think that's what that stat Ooh, means. They're pretty much like the, for each other. the same amount of talent. One for one, uh, Andre Drummond for Jarrett Allen. Who says no? Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all my bright spots for them. Not an ideal season for Chicago. And my hater thing, I said, it feels like this season is inspiring the front office to be like, huh. We make some tweaks. We could really make a run with these guys. They're good. Okay, like we've got some stuff here, and so that's why my my bright spot was Kobe and White and uh, Dosunmu. That only comes if they blow it up. 
this season. Like if they're if they're trying to run it back with DeRozan and Vooch and everybody, uh, I don't feel good about the future. I feel really bad, and it will only get worse as time goes on. So yeah, uh, not not ideal. We do have a lobby request. <gasps> Should the Bulls actually? be better than their record indicates uh mm. and then it says it says in parentheses wolves broadcast parentheses blow that shit up um what <laughs> i i don't know okay oh, I see, I see. did they say it on the wolves broadcast is that what they're implying yeah or? yeah oh, and then okay. he's saying he does not believe this <laughs> well that's definitely a take somebody who uh has not paid attention to the Bulls that much would have. Like, that's definitely an opposing broadcast take. Is like, oh, you see all these clutch stats this year. You see they're spearheaded by DeRozan, one of the best scorers in the league. There's a lot of stuff. This is a scary opponent. I wouldn't want to see him in the first round. Uh, but, like, if you've been locked into the team for any extended period of time, even, like, eight months, it's just like, yeah, this is – This is eight dead. years. Yeah, well, well, if you've been there since if you've been there since nineteen year old Luol Deng, I can only feel for you. That's, that's, that's nasty stuff, man. Um, yeah, that's it. Do you have any final thoughts on Chicago? Um, last two bright spots would be Caruso, forty percent from three, along with his elite, 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 elite of the most elite defense, uh, versatility, uh, shutting guys down, making plays all the time. What a spectacular! waste of a genius basketball player this why do, why do bad teams why do bad teams get to have good role players the next we Derek need, White that's what they're calling uh, Caruso honestly we need uh we need the militia to storm the United Center and kidnap Alex Caruso and drop him in Golden State or something or to, who would whoa, be where whoa. would he be why are you giving at? the Warriors Caruso that's fucked up um uh, as, if I couldn't give him to Denver, I'd give him to Minnesota. But I don't know. Minnesota relies so heavenly, heavily on like the Conley Gobert. Like Conley makes Gobert way more tolerable offensively. So yeah, we'll give him to the Celtics. Holiday yeah, White yeah. Russo lineups. Um, holiday Holiday Six Man of the Year next year. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is uh, Unrelup Bitum. The height. There was a little bit of a moment where we were like, Bitum! And now he's not playing. He's not shooting as well, but he'll be back. Perfect. Speaking of back, get back. Out of my face. Timestamp. Um, all right. Now we're going to the Brooklyn. I mean, just really at the absolute peak of the NBA. The Bulls, Nets, Hawks run. Oh, okay. So I guess the Hawks are next, and then it's the Nets after that. Uh, Three and one in their last four. Obviously, they beat Boston twice. They beat the Bulls, and then they lost to the Bucks. My bright spots: um, Jalen Johnson. Last twenty-three Ooh. games, he has been seventeen points. His last twenty-three, not the last twenty-three of the team. I think he's missed a pretty extended period of time. Seventeen points, nine rebounds, four assists on fifty-five percent true shooting with just one point two turnovers per game. There's a pretty deep. His shot looks nice. There are stretches where he hits like. 36 percent for eight games or whatever i think he's 34 percent on the year so hit or miss with his three but it's trending in the right direction and just like a very good athletic wing that you like to see for a team with a guy like trey young on it which i mean we'll get to that in a little bit i don't know how long he's gonna be there but shoot while he is there jalen johnson is a good pairing for him what do you think I had that written down too. Uh, my next one would be Trey Young trying on defense. Everybody, the pendulum finally swung back. It was like he finally started trying on defense. And then the psychos on Twitter, they were like, actually, he's great at defense. Actually, he's <laughs> one of the best defensive guards. So. That's not what we've been saying. He's just That's- he's just okay. <laughs> That's fine. I like I like it. It's gone. I li- yes, he's two way two way Trey. Hey, he got to stop on Kevin Durant in the clutch. So, yep. yep. If, you, if you can guard, if you can lock up Kevin Durant for one possession, who's to say you can't lock him up for a whole game? Yep, LeBron could do that. Yeah, LeBron. I mean, biggest possession of his life. Are you serious? Twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen finals. He's like, oh, yep. switch with me, Iman Shumpert. Please, please come guard this guy. He's terrifying. Save me, Maharaga. Save me, Ma. exactly, Shumpert. 
Mapa Shumpert, Mazagava. Oh, there we go. Timofey Mazagava. And he's he's oh, uh, saving LeBron in 2015. Guy. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. After Jalen Johnson, uh, I said it's nice that Trey made it into the All Star game by the skin of his teeth, but it does <laughs> almost feel cooler to have like the GOAT non All Star season, which this almost certainly would have been if he didn't make it. Uh like twenty six and ten on above league average efficiency with really good three point numbers and everything. But and elite last defense. minute and elite defense, one of the best defenders in the league. The next Derek White, many people are saying this. Uh yeah. So that that was good. Good that he's an all star. That's nice. You don't want to see him miss out on that. Um it's I like that the Hawks are somehow an insane offensive team. Every game they're they're scoring 150 points. Every game they're losing because they the other team scored 155 or whatever. But they're racking up the points. But somehow they are only eighth on the year. Um, if we go last 15, they're fifth, and the last 10, they're the third best offense. But still, I. I they're they're getting the points up there, so that's good. Um, and then I'll say Dejounte Murray's redemption story. Uh, there were times at this in the year where he's like he's like talking to random Hawks fans in the DMs, and he's like, "This team's <laughs> trash. I hate him." I, and then he's like d- demanding a trade publicly, and everything seems like it's falling apart. And then now all of a sudden everything's cool. He's like, "I'm playing well. I'm waiting for Trey to get back." I'm Given the fan extra ten thousand dollars, I'm I'm a good guy. So maybe the tides are turning on Dejounte Murray. And then the the final thing I'll say is that Trey Young Instagram post in the hospital. What a what a great moment. <laughs> that was a that's an all timer post where it's like holy shit, what happened to him? Did he have like a Sean Livingston knee thing? No, it was a finger surgery. Um, yeah, <laughs> made it so through. I, I wrote for the Dejounte run. It's it is nice. It is nice. Nineteen games without Trey, twenty six nine and six on fifty five percent true shooting, three point two turnovers, eleven and eight record with wins over the Magic, Knicks, Cavs, Clippers, and Celtics twice. So uh, I don't I don't know like what this duo looks like in the future, but uh, it's it's cool to see that Dejounte Murray isn't completely washed. Uh, I also wrote down that Bogdanovich looks really good. For 31 years old, I thought that motherfucker was 27. Um, and then my hater take, Trey X DeJounte, didn't <gasps> really work. Um, and some some restructuring probably needs to be done this offseason. This, now, like you said, he's waiting for Trey to get back. The vibes have kind of been cured by DeJounte getting to play well by himself for a little while now. But I'm just curious, what does it look like when Trey's back and everything? And then we have... A lobby request, Vit Krejci, uh, maybe mm-hmm. earning himself, maybe earning himself a couple more years in the league with how he's playing lately. And I just wrote down, I think you mean the Tatum stopper. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a Vit Krejci if he got an extension. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're just wand- the Hawks front office just wandering around making that joke to each other all day, and one of them's <laughs> sick of it, but everybody else is really having a good time with it. So. <laughs> Are we sure? Be- I, I have never even checked on the pronunciation. Are we sure that's how we say it? I think I think it is. Let's get basketball. Let's get basketball reference up here. Vit. I think it's Vit. Yeah, Cray Chi. Yeah, Cray Chi. Vit Cray Chi. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Epic. So shout out to Vit, man. Epic. Tatum stopper. Good. Eh, is he a good shooter? Forty-seven percent from three on huge volume. I would wager. 3.1 attempts per game, baby. Extend Whoa. him. Max him out. Let's get it. Oh, my God. Speaking of get, get it out of my face. Going to Brooklyn, nice. baby. 212. Timestamp. Um, uh, two and two. Wins over the Bulls and the Wizards. Losses to the Pacers and the Lakers. My favorite things. This is the one I struggled with the most, probably, to come up with a lot of favorite things. Um, Cam Thomas starter arc. Uh, okay, so I got some Thomas stats to throw at you. Among Whoa. players, among players 24 years or younger, Cam Thomas recorded the fifth most 30 point games this season with 13. Um, among players 22 years old or younger, 
Uh, only five other players averaged more than 21 points per game. This is a group. Wembenyama, Shangun, Paolo Bancaro, Anthony Edwards, Cade Cunningham, and Cam Thomas. And Cam Thomas, higher true shooting percentage than all-star Paolo Bancaro. 55.2% for Cam Thomas. Paolo, a measly 55.0%. So who's the better scorer, really? Who's to say? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll rapid fire you my next, my next ones. Um, yeah, all right. Momentary Ben Simmons hype. When, when he came back and everyone's like, wait a second, what if he's good again? What if he's healthy? And then he was not, um, role player, super team. I, and I love that. They're like, we were getting all the good role players and we're not giving them up for anything. I swear to God, don't you dare touch our role players. Um, the Macau Bridges confidence, five first round picks. No. Jalen Green and, and and our first round picks. No. We're not giving up this guy. Are you crazy? It's Macau Bridges. Um the, I also wrote the Cam Thomas explosions and I wrote Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton's still good. I wrote Nick Claxton as well. I said one of the most underrated centers in the league, but does nothing to elevate the floor of a bad team. Pretty much everything he does well is like suited for a contender or a competitive team at the very least. He is one of three players that averaged at least nine rebounds and two blocks on 55% from the field or better alongside Anthony Davis and Rudy Gobert. I hated everything else about their season. That was my (laughs) hater thing. They don't have their picks. They didn't trade anything at the deadline. They held on to a bunch of players who they could have gotten assets for, and they're being garbage this season for no reason. Uh, We have a lobbyist request. What should I do until 2027 when the Nets are quote-unquote good again? Buddy, your timeline's fucked up. It's going to be longer than that Uh, because we're not even in the – we're not even in the rebuild yet. We're just in the being bad for no – like. 2027 they don't even have like that's the first year they can tank for their pick like the it's it's fucked for a while so i don't know um maybe get into movies that could be good for you push-ups sit-ups um curls i don't know get maybe next time next time the nets are good you 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 pop out of the at the game and you have a crop top. You get a on? ten day. You get a ten day. Maybe they pick. Oh, they're like, that, guy, that guy's crop top. Yeah, He's maybe, fucking shredded. Holy shit! You're the one to save this team. Yeah, they, it's they're not going anywhere. So start start getting shots up today. Hell yeah, that rocks. All right, um, get him out of my face. Timestamp. Got him to four minutes. Five things in four minutes. That's what we call this segment. Bottom of the east. Ooh. Um. Moving on to the Raptors, uh, 0-4 in their last four. Lost to the Lakers, lost to the Knicks, lost to the Nets, lost to the 76ers. Uh, 14-game losing streak. I'll let you start this off. What was one of your What was one of your good things about the Raptors? Scotty Barnes' first half of the season where he was a complete monster on both ends. He was killing people in the post. He was making jumpers. He was everywhere flying around defensively. He was a monster. He was. He was monstrous. Great defender, great passer. Solid scorer with lots of room to grow in all three categories. That's what I wrote down. The scoring has fallen off. I got to acknowledge our our Orlando Magic Ops. I... Right. I felt I said very confidently Scotty Barnes was a better player than Paolo. Um, and defensively, very clearly better than Paolo, I think. Passing, pretty solidly ahead I, of Paolo. I think people really like Paolo's passing, but I don't think – I think the, the acoustic memes have really ruined Scott. Like, mm-hmm. Scotty Barnes was drafted because of the passing. Like, he's a really, really special passer. And as good as Paolo has been, I don't think he's quite – as as good as Scotty. Um but as when it comes down to scoring, Scotty was more productive, but post trade when they took away Siakam and uh OG and the the talent around him got pretty rough, mm-hmm. his scoring efficiency did fall off. So if you want to say the the first half scoring numbers, what would Paolo look like playing next to playing off Siakam and them? You you have an argument, but Overall, I'd still take Scotty, but uh, scoring wise, Paul is better. Um, yeah, uh, Scotty this year, I'm on board with those that analysis, by the way. 
Uh, Scotty this year is the only player in the league to average at least 19.6 assists and one and a half blocks. If you take if you take his stocks, he averaged 2.8 oh. stocks. Uh, then SGA joins that club with like 36 and whatever. Obviously, he's an MVP candidate. Um, feels to me like Scotty cemented himself as a top five player, 22 years or younger. Uh, to me, when when Benyama and Anthony Edwards obviously locked for that category, those are the top two. But then you have Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Cade Cunningham, Chet Holmgren, Alperen Sengun, and Jalen Williams. How many do are like? Do you feel like Scotty is better than what would he need to be better than one? Two? Here, here, run me through those guys. I'll tell you if I'm. If all I'm, right, all right, pa- Paolo. Um, I think he's better than Paolo right now. And I, and I think he has more potential. Um, but we'll see how that turns out. Franz, he's better than Franz. Cade. I think he's better than Cade. Jalen Williams. I think Jalen Williams is probably better. Uh, Alperin Shangun. Ooh. That I'll one's hard because they're... They're not even like – it's hard to compare them. It's yeah. easy to compare like Paolo, Franz, Jalen Williams, and Scotty, But Shangun is like a completely different thing. I, I would go Shangun as well. Um, Chet Holmgren. I'll go Holmgren. I feel I feel pretty comfortable. Who who were the top two you said in this group? Wemby and who? Uh, and Anthony Edwards. Edwards. I would feel pretty comfortable slotting Chet in at three. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, I said Wemby, Ant, yes, Chet, yes, uh, Jalen Williams. I wrote maybe, and then Shangun. I said yes. So Jalen and Jalen Williams has been so good this year. We're really looking at it like, like the best forty games, fifty games of Jalen Williams' career at this point, or probably closer to seventy games. He hasn't missed a ton of time versus a much larger sample size for Scotty, but uh. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's right there at around that fifth or sixth spot. So that rocks for Toronto. That's really good. Uh, my other bright spot, just generally them having a direction now. I feel like we've kind of, since OG worked out so great in New York and Siakam's been in Indiana for so long, we did forget like the start of this season, the vibes in Toronto of just like, holy fuck, we have got to get these guys out of here this season. The fact that they accomplished that, this is a net positive year. They have the ability to tank, the ability to command their own destiny, the ability to flush out a nice young core that they've already started building. So that rocks. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Um, RJ Barrett resurgence. I did not believe it was possible. I'll tell you what, I was a major doubter, but he kept it up for his entire time with the Raptors. So we'll see, we'll see what's happening. Next going Cam into Reddish. Next year. <gasps> That'd be crazy. All three, all the Duke big three. Yeah. They're young core. Scotty, RJ, uh, who's 23. Quickly's 24. Grady Dick is 20 plus Probably a top five pick in what is admittedly not the strongest draft in the world, but it's not like they're going to be elite next season either. So who's to say they won't get another good draft pick? The the core, the building blocks are there uh, for a nice young core. I also like that they traded Dennis Schroeder. Um, my hater thing, I don't understand why they traded for Olenek, and I feel like they held on to assets that if they were really trying to do like a fire sale, uh, guys like Gary Trent Jr., they probably could have gotten some shit back for. Um, and so I just don't know. And then we have a lobbyist request. Grady Dick, most improved player, 2025-26. What do you think about that? 25-26? Is that next year? No, right? No, it's no. two years. Okay, so this guy is counting on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess. I. No, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, on the virtue of principle, I'm opposed to it. I'm opposed to third-year players winning most improved player because I think your third year is supposed to be when you take the leap. So I, I'm, I'm not into that. But I am into Dick Faith. I wrote down Dick Faith. I have Dick Faith. I have uh, faith that Grady Dick, he's been pretty up and down, but I have faith in uh, his shooting. Um, in addition to that, I also wrote down quickly, uh, 18, five and seven, 40% high volume, three point shooting, low turnover. Uh, he was a good defender for the Knicks. I don't know how good he's been on the Raptors, but I think 
that's that's a good piece to have with Scotty Barnes. Mm-hmm. So um, I think they are there's some there's some bright spots. They, I I wish my team was in as good position as the Raptors. Ochi Abaji in a Raptors uniform looks really good. That's all I got. Handsome, handsome guy. Um, he he can stay in our face. Everybody else, get out of here. Oh, timestamp. Um, the Charlotte Hornets one and three in their last four. <laughs> Beat the Cavs, lost to the Celtics, Clippers, and the Warriors. I'll let you lead off. What was your favorite bright spot of their season? I'm glad they were so bad that we didn't have to talk about Miles Bridges. That is one of them. But also Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller has been really, really good for them and looking like a good core piece. Uh, 17-4-2 on 37% from three. Um, Yeah, just looks like a really good player. Yeah. Um, I said the Brandon Miller pick hit among players 23 or younger. The only other ones to shoot at least 37% on six or more three-point attempts per game are Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey, Trey Murphy, and Kobe White. Nobody younger than 23 matched both of those marks. Suggs hit 40% on 5.2. Cam Thomas hit 36% on 5.7. Jabari Smith Jr., 36% 36% on 4.8, and then GG Jackson, 36% on 5.4 attempts. They all came close, but Brandon Miller was a better shooter than all of them. I like that they pulled the trigger on the Rozier and the Hayward trades at the correct time, got good returns on each player. Um, what was it? $28 million off the books with Lowry's contract, and then they got Berton's contract, which is another $16 million off the books after next season plus a first-rounder and two second-round picks for guys that, I mean, Rozier's good. I think he'll be good in Miami. Hayward's up and down. He can make an impact. I think that's a good haul for those guys, and it it, uh, fully moves you into the quote-unquote LaMelo era, I suppose. He was good in the games he played. Not a great sign that he missed so much time again, but uh, he's very good. Did you see LeVar Ball's quote? What did he say? He said, uh... They're getting injured because they got away from me. If you're if you're doing all those hills, then of course you'll keep the strength. But once you start getting involved with these rubber bands and stuff, the your body, of course, it's going to break down. And uh, also, Lamelo's shoes are super flimsy. That's why he turns his ankle every time he lands in one of those. In reference to Puma shoes, uh, as opposed to the big baller brand shoes that really those were a foundation of Lonzo Ball's health and success in the league. That checks out to me. That sounds accurate to me. I think that's that's right. Um, and then my last two things are Poku and Trey Mann. I like that they got him on their team. Yeah. Uh, I like Mark Williams, who only played ah. like 19 games. That sucks. But 13 points, 10 rebounds, 67% true shooting. Great, just like play finisher, pick and roll, lob threat kind of guy while being a pretty solid rim protector. Really good athlete. I liked that. Um, My hater thing, LaMelo Ball's health could drive this team to a crossroads at some point pretty soon. Uh, He only played 22 games this season, only played 36 last season. In theory, they have a solid young core. They have a good direction. But if the offensive engine and their best young player can't stay healthy, they aren't really building towards anything like none of nothing else is going to matter if the foundation doesn't work uh, and then they still employ miles bridges so that's an l bozos get them out of our face those bozos get them out of our face thanks for saying it. i didn't have to um the wizards Ooh. Ooh. one and three in their last four beat the bucks hashtag pack watch hashtag maybe the second best team in the east uh then they lost to the nets the pistons and the heat Ugh. um i like similar to the raptors i like that they have a direction now we're done with the beal era can move fully into a rebuild um jordan pool not magically a garbage player just needed a second to acclimate it looks like still probably going to be One of the worst-ish contracts in the league, but at least he can contribute something from like a trying-to-win games standpoint. 17 points and five assists since January 1st. The efficiency has been bad, but uh, his previous season high before January 1st was eight assists, and he's, uh, he's gone over that six times in the new year, so he's looked really, really solid to start the year. Ooh, also, I'll let you cook, but Denny Avdia has been really good this year. 
Denny Avdia, I definitely had him written down. Um, another guy who's established himself as just a core piece that you can count on. Uh, fantastic defender, 6'10 guy, super fast, good passer, scoring well, uh, finally shooting threes. Um, he's looking like, yeah, he's like a guy you could see starting on a championship contender should that kind of thing ever <laughs> emerge in Washington, D.C. I don't know if that's possible. but When uh, Wemby comes. When Bill all gets Wemby well, to come yeah, hang when, out. Yeah. Oh, I should have wrote that down. I wrote down Cooley Bully defense, but potential Cooley Bully lobbying of Victor Wembanyama. He's coming. He's going to get him to, to leave San Antonio. He's coming to D.C. Woo! Hell yeah. The fucking rocks. Yeah, Denny, Denny rocks. Uh, really, 14.7 rebounds, 4 assists. 60% true shooting, 38% from three on just over three attempts. All of that is way up since February. He's nearly a 20-point-per-game scorer on still really good efficiency and everything. The only other players who match 14-7-4 and four on those uh, three-point numbers are LeBron, Tatum, Luka, and DeMontis Sabonis on 1.1 oh. 1. 1, 1. 1 three-point attempts per game. I figured I didn't want to exclude him from the list just because of low volume, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, compared to last year, he's up five points per game and one assist. He's six percent higher in his true shoot, his true shooting percentage. And yeah, he was already a good defender this year. He's looked individually just like really, really, really good. He fucking yeah, he rocks a lot. And then Corey Kispert, I also wrote down uh, sixteen points and four rebounds on sixty two percent true shooting over the last nineteen games. 40% from three on just under seven attempts. Well, he's a not like a great defender, not like Avdia caliber defensively or anything, but he has good defensive tools. He's six seven. He's got a big wingspan and everything. And uh he he tries. He tries his heart out on that end. I'll say that much. Um yeah. The the last things I have. Oh, I like uh the Kuzma funny tweet where he's talking about the Pistons, and he's like, at this point, anyone, everyone doesn't want to be that team. And then they were that team twice. Um, I liked uh, Jordan Poole's ridiculousness. Like, there's sometimes he's just doing crazy. Like, at the beginning of the season, it looked like they were intentionally losing games. Um, and then Tristan Vucevic. The hey. last couple of years, there's been some hype. So, shout out to Tristan. I think hey, he, what beat up, he beat up the Bucks right? last night. He had like 15 points. Yeah, shout out to him. He's saving the franchise. Get him out yeah. of our face. If, uh, I don't know if you have anything. But... <laughs> um, I don't even think I do. I said hater thing. They were unwatchable for most of the year. Now that Poole's figured <laughs> it out, uh, it's, it's like fine. It's just like normal bad basketball. But yeah, uh, lobbyist request. Predict what the rest of Jordan Poole's career will be. Uh, I said the contract, it makes it difficult for a good team to even like want him, uh, barring he skyrockets into an all-star. But I think he'll probably finish out the contract in D.C. And then we're looking at like a capable starter, maybe slightly overqualified six-man just uh, for the rest of his career. I don't think... He's ever going to be worth the amount of money he's currently getting paid, but I also don't think he's going to be a complete non-factor three years from now. Yeah, I think the the life of the contract probably won't be contributing towards like winning or anything. But once it's up, there'll be a redemption story somewhere. Maybe back, maybe Draymond's dead by then, and so uh, he goes to the Warriors, not literally dead, but off the team. So. Okay, I was like, what the fuck happened to Draymond in this timeline? Oh, my God. He goes to fight for the idea. <laughs> ah, damn. Well, if that happens, I can't say rest in peace, so I'll just get him out of our face. We're moving on to the Pistons, baby. Um, They are 1-3 and three in their last four. They beat the Wizards. They lost to the Grizzlies, Wolves, and the Knicks. There's there's some fun stuff here. Uh. The losing streak was fun. As someone who doesn't yeah. care about the Pistons, <laughs> the losing streak fucking rocked. I wish they had set the record. It's fine that they didn't. It's fine that they only tied it. But you love seeing history like that because, like, 12, the Raptors, 14 games actively. That's a ton. That's like, holy shit. So when you hit, like, 22 
and it starts becoming like must see TV at that point. That's like <laughs> Every that's game one of the most is like <laughs> is is awesome. <laughs> yeah, and like and then it becomes like the other team is almost psyching themselves out where towards the end of the Pistons uh the losing streak a lot of the the talk on Twitter was like this is a team that shouldn't that they don't deserve to lose 25 straight games. They're more talented than this because yeah. like they would go into the fourth quarter up seven and the they Nets like almost would beat like the fire. Celtics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit like that. And so, uh, yeah, like Kuzma said, at this point, you just don't want to be that team. So that that was a really fun uh, story to this season. I liked it a lot. What about you? Yeah, that was, that was cool. Um, I think it's funny that Monty Williams, like, wants to get fired <laughs> he's like just sabotaging this team at every turn um but it's just not gonna happen <laughs> so it's like a sitcom type situation um another thing would be asar thompson defense remember the year started asar thompson we were all freaking out we were like this guy's the best defender i've ever seen as a rookie and now his brother's healthy and we're like is this guy the, the best defender is he even better oh Wait, my is that god the same oh, guy good. i thought he was on a different team <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah he, i got i got some numbers written down here um 8.6 rebounds two stocks only 12 other oh. players match those numbers some they're not <laughs> it's, it's a pretty mixed bag so we have anthony davis Jokic, oh. Giannis, oh. uh bam oh. wemby oh. luca scotty barnes lebron Nurkic and then uh, Amen Thompson. So there's some elite defenders Wait, in what, there. There's what, some... what is this? What is this threshold? Uh, it's eight points, six rebounds, and two stocks per game. And so, yeah. Uh, really? Anthony... How... Luca's yeah. getting that? Yeah, yeah. Luca is sitting at exactly like one block, one steal per game. I'm pretty. Eh, maybe, yeah, maybe he's getting a block. That's crazy. Let's see. Let's look. I I know he hit it. It surprised me. Um. Let's look it up. Steal. No, okay. He's one and a half steals, 0. 0.5 ah. blocks per game. Okay. That's, yeah. He's when gambling. I said he's Luca, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he's just in the middle of the passing lane. His guy is 15 feet behind him, and there's like a cartoon <laughs> cloud of dust. Just, boom. Um, yeah. So Thompson, he's looked really good. Um, it was funny. Like, that's one of the big. I mean, that leads into my next one. Killian Hayes being bad. Uh, just like Killian Hayes being horrible and Monty Williams being like, no, this is a 25-minute per game guy. No question. Like, we got to have him out there. This is a building block of the future. It's it's our guy, Killian. Um, and so for him to be – I mean, I guess he got cut and just like hasn't – no one's picked him up. Maybe he'll be like a Dennis Smith Jr. story in a couple of years or something. But uh, that was a funny story of the season to me. Yeah, and and yeah, he Monty Williams has driven Jay Nivey to Jesus. He's Jay Nivey's talking about the red the the rapture. The rapture. He he was on his knees. He's like, God, please give me a chance. I'm I I'm. Better than Killian Hayes, I think. I should get minutes on this team. Um, so. He's like, God, you see how high I jump in practice. You see how fast I am. Please let me play. Why did you give me these gifts? <laughs> and take, he's like, you remember Spider-Man 3 where uh, Venom, what's his name? Uh, Topher Grace is praying. He's mm -hmm. like, God, please kill Peter Parker. <laughs> he, I think that's what Jaden I was like, God, please kill Killian Hayes or Monty Williams. Um, but... Yeah, the flashes of Jay Nivey have been really good. He has not been able to string it together consistently. Um, so that's not good. Uh, the other things I wrote were February Cade, 22, 5, and 7. Uh, he shot 44% from three. He was uh, 6 recruiting. So that was dope. Uh, that didn't last. Um, and then finally, Jalen Duran flashes. Though I'll tell you what, I've been seeing some Jalen Duran slander online. Me too. I've I've been seeing it a lot. They've been calling him Andre Drummond 2.0. Even though the efficiency by itself, I feel like that probably puts him into a separate category. But not a great defender. Not a great disengaged on the defensive end. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> What's his face? You just no comment. I yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk bad about my boy. <laughs> I mean, he's cool. Uh, as far I mean, he's he's buff. 
strongest looking guy in the world, maybe. But uh Oh, in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we just jump right to the world. What about the rock? <laughs> well, because like uh, you have to. Con- I mean, I guess there's the guy who played the mountain in Game of Thrones, but for most like bodybuilders and everything, you're like, okay, that guy's five nine. That's why. That's why he's built like square. Like he's not. He's not big like that. And then for so when you look at Jalen Duran, you're like, oh, he's seven feet tall and just turned twenty years old. Uh. He's he's really strong. So yeah, that's that's my. I think Hillary Clinton looks like the strongest guy in the world because of her integrity. Get over it. Did you see that quote? Uh, Was it Stephen A? I didn't see the clip yet. I yeah, he was popping off. Well, yeah, she was like, I don't know. I didn't see the quote. She just said, "Uh oh, oh, people who don't want to vote for Biden, get over it. There's only two. There's only two candidates. You got to get over it. That's what she said. So." Great job, Dems. You guys are so likable. This is so. Did, this did you is see so Stephen great. Stephen A yeah. went and broke it down on CNN. I did. He cooked like it was like a. <laughs> it was like Kwame Brown level cooked. Like it, he <laughs> he was he was cooking. It fucking rocked. So yeah, shout out I, Stephen A. Smith. Don't agree with you on everything, but uh, that was bars right there. My last bright spot. I, I like that 28-year-old Simone Fontecchio pulled up for 20 games at the end of the season, and he's been like 15 points and five assists on really good efficiency during that span. Uh, that's just – what are I'm you doing? I'm glad he Go went home. there too. I hated that guy in Utah. He was taking my minutes. <laughs> he's taking Bryce's minutes, man. Get him out of – get him out of our <laughs> face maybe even. Um, do you have awards for this week? I didn't write any down. No, I do not. Cool. Well, I guess – we are both Jeremy Lindland Sanity Players of the Week. Oh. I guess all I guess all of the listeners are clutch players of the week. I guess Hillary Clinton is Ferris Bueller's <gasps> week off. And I guess Whoa. Um Who who should be the comeback? I'll, I'll leave that one up to you. Who's comeback player of the week? The comeback player of the week is the NBA podcast. It's been dead, but we brought it back. We brought it back. We brought it back to life. What can we say, people? All right. Thank you all for tuning in to this week's free episode. Patreon.com slash State of the League. You can get another one tomorrow. Peace.